Hi, family. Um, good afternoon and happy Sabbath to everyone. We're live on Facebook. Thank you to the Facebook family. Thank you to everyone who came here on time. My name is Ntanda Zukolani Jovo, and I will be your host today. And our speaker is already here, good to go. Right, I'm going to give the announcements. But before that, we ask the Lord, our Savior, to help us and bless us as we are about to start our lesson. Let's all close our eyes where we are and pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much. We appreciate your presence in this place. Appreciate your presence on planet Earth. We appreciate that you look at us with glasses tinted with grace. We appreciate that so much. We're about to get into our lesson. The title is Why Am I an Adventist? We pray that you bless your daughter, Usama Nkulunkulu, that she may be able to speak words that come from your throne of grace and that at the end of the day, Lord, we may be established in your word, rooted with you, blessed and uplifted. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm going to now share the screen quickly, and I'm going to give to the announcements a couple of things that are happening in the next coming couple of weeks. So let's get ready to learn what's coming up in the next coming couple of weeks. I'll be very quick on this because of our time, but uh, at the same time, I want to make sure that I am Tara there. Okay, I should be sharing the screen. Welcome to 230 Conversations. We're all about thought facilitation and discussion as it were. That's all that we are about in this platform. We are on Facebook, which is our page we are going live on. We ask that you please like our page, follow it, because in that particular page, that's where you get to get your uh, announcements, what's happening next week, what happened previously, what will happen, what would happen, all those kind of things. Please do follow and like that. And that's again where we are live streaming from. We are on YouTube. This particular presentation today will be on the YouTube page, probably by end of day, if not, early morning tomorrow. So you can always rewatch it. And that goes to say with the other uh, programs that we've had before, the month of July was hectic, right? It was about love, marriage, and we ended it up last week with the beautiful couple goals. And that particular presentation is on our YouTube channel. Please do follow that through as well. Now, we are also under our mother, whom we call OSDA underscore advertise. That's on Instagram. Please do follow that page as well. That's where you can get everything SDA. And by the way, today, we are asking our questions, why am I an Adventist? So please do get to follow that one. If you want to advertise your uh, programs, whether it's um, here in South Africa or outside, whatever the case could be, please do check with the administrators of this page. You should be able to advertise, and there's quite a number of followers. Also, SDA underscore advertise, the same platform that's on Instagram, is found also on Facebook. Do follow that one and like it as well. We have the 9.30 lesson. I tell you today was fire on fire. Leander was taking us through the 9.30 Sabbath school lesson. So please understand that 2.30 has a child. Uh, uh, the child for 2.30 is the 9.30 Sabbath school lesson. And from there on, we are learning today, finding rest in family ties. That was our lesson. We're inviting you next week. Please do come for our lesson at 9.30 and I will be teaching it there and oh, okay, there she is. She's already on the platform, ready to go. Why am I an Adventist? And look into religious inclinations, labels, and all of that. She sent a video during the week where she was telling us about why, or rather getting us ready to know more about why am I an Adventist quickly. Now, because it's Women's Month in South Africa, we're celebrating women by all means. The world against the world. Ubi Shevendalo taking us through. That is for the next coming week after Usamu. And then Unos Pio Baloi taking us through on the 21st, 21st which is childhood, childhood wounds. Exactly. Then on the 28th, we've got a slight surprise. We're still trying to come up with the surprise. The last month, last Sabbath of August, Women's Month, we've got a slight surprise. So we'll tell you when the surprise comes through, something very interesting coming then. Dr. Agnara Nguyen, the month of September is a month of theology. How are we saved? That's on the 4th of September, a month of theology. We men and we men, menhood from a biblical lenses, Ukukule Tunyoni taking us through. Then on the 18th of September, the essence of giving. And who are we having? O Pastor Kaya Mieza on the essence of giving on that particular situation there. Further on, we've got U, U brother Arthur Smanda taking us through on the 25th, the month of theology, the church, 
and sexuality. Can't wait for that one to come through. Then we're starting off the month of October with who, brother? Kobegani Ashton, and he's taking us through if failure was a person. More things are, are coming through. We'll po keep you posted. Please do check those social media handles. You should be able to get everything. And then, towards the end of my announcement, rest, relationships, and healing. Can't wait for next week. In this week's Sabbath school lesson, it was about Joseph being sold into slavery and then going into Egypt and becoming the prime minister. And then now we're going to be talking about what happens when his brothers go to Egypt to look for food, the very ones that definitely sold him and wanted to kill him. So please do join us. That's next week on the 14th of August, Rest Relationships and Healing at 9.30. Using the same link that you used today and the same Facebook link if you're watching from Facebook. And then lastly, we're cooking something right there. T-shirts are being cooked. 230 conversation t-shirts. The initiative is so that if we sell them, then you can buy uh, data or airtime for people who want to come in. So if you do want to contribute to the airtime contributions, for now the teachers are not ready, but if you do want to contribute to the airtime, please do contact Mina, that's my number, or actually if you can't find me, which is a very rare thing, so please, please, please do contact Mina and I'll be able to um, you know, appreciate. Uh, and those that want data, want airtime, please do not hesitate. Sabbath in, Sabbath out. Please do come through. We'll try to make a plan for you. Okay, that's the end of the announcements. And I'm going to stop the sharing here. Samu, I'm getting ready to make sure that you have your video on. And then I'm going to unmute you. Then you become the one that's on the stage. So just try to get your video on. Um, and then we're getting ready to start. Excited about why am I an advent? Right? Uh, why am I an adventist? Okay, Sam, I think Sam is getting a video ready right there. And all I'm just gonna try and unmute you. Okay, let me look for you, Samu. Uh, you've already um let me look for you there and unmute you. You're ready to go. There you go. Okay, Sam, take us through. God bless you. When, you. when you're done, give it over to me, then we can facilitate the uh, questions and answer segment. Good to go. Okay, hi everyone. Um, okay, yeah, it's been yeah, some difficult times trying to set up, but anyways, um, at least that's sorted. Uh, I, I'm, tempted, I'm tempted to greet um everyone in the name of jesus but uh yeah i don't know how people greet in the setting um but what's up to to those are cool with that uh hello uh, so basically um from the short intro that i gave um in the video um oh guys can you guys see me no no we can't i i'm, I'm thinking it was me but um, we just see a, I see a blank screen. So, so we, we really can't. Oh, all right, so. Yeah. Okay. okay, good, now you can go ahead. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, um, so I was saying, yeah. So I sent a short intro just speaking about why, um, what inspired the topic. So it's just a basically, basically, um, an identity thing, right? Um, it's always best to know um, who and what basically you are, like, you know, and what you identify yourself with, as opposed to um, what the world um, may say. So, but before we go on with our discussion, um, I'll say that, you know, I don't know everything. Um, it's just an overview of what I believe or what I think or my thoughts are with regards to what an Adventist um, should be or is like, you know, for a better term. But we can, you know, we can share thoughts and ideas um, and learn from each other as we go. So for my presentation here, so yeah, so, so the first thing I wanted us to just outline is, um, you know, who and what people think Adventists are. So I saw a couple of nice memes on the internet. Uh, as you can see there, you know, uh, the first one says, you know, who, who we think we are. You know, we see those people that are uh, that family longing for the second coming or they are looking towards Jesus coming in the sky. And 
And then the next one is, is what other religions think that we are, you know, those people wearing white uh, garments, you know, uh, looking all <laughs> holy, okay. Yeah, because of the, the white garments per se. And then it goes on, you know, um, to other religions that think that we are cults and all of that. And then what National, National Geographic thinks that we are. I really don't know what that grandmother is doing, but yeah. Um, and then what your neighbor thinks you are and who you really think you are. Um, then this one was even more um, hilarious for me. Um, what we think we are is a lecture, a lecture like having so many notes, you know, on just showing sometimes when we explain um, our Adventism to other people, it might look like this, like it looks a little chaotic. It looks like too much, like an information overload. And then what fashion things that we are, um, yeah, yeah. Um, what our friends think that we all think that um, we are locked out from the world because we don't we don't do a lot of things. So for some of our friends, Adventism may be like a prison, you know, because you guys don't do this, you don't do that. So it, for them, it seems like that. And then um, on the top right for me, it says what other Christians think that we are with the man with like a judge. So we're constantly looking at other Christians and we're saying, okay, you know, this is not right. This is not right. You know, you should do this like this as like almost like critiques, you know. Um, I've, I've heard some of my friends, non-Adventist friends say that, you know, we, we're a bit pharisaical on other people or other religions. Um, and we sometimes seem like, you know, we are the only way basically to, to heaven, something like that. And then um, what society thinks, you know, that whole cult thing going on. And then the last one says that what we actually do um, in church when we are sleeping during the night. So um, yeah, so that's basically an overview of you know the yeah the funny stuff or what society basically thinks that we are. There could be more than these that I've just outlined um, in from these memes that I got on the internet. But my the basic emphasis for this is this, right? Um, there's a book by Doug Batchelor. Um, it's titled "Finding Yourself in Christ." So one of the analogies that he uses, he uses um, the Tarzan story. And he says that um, the Tarzan story was based more or less on, on a true story. And that um, this man living in a jungle um, with um, you know, monkeys ends up acting like monkeys because he does not necessarily perceive himself as a human being. You know? So perception plays a role in how um, we also behave. So how I perceive myself, if I perceive myself as a wealthy person, I will act uh, <laughs> like a wealthy person, you know? Um, if I perceive myself as intelligent, you know, certain things, you know, will come, you know, from that. So behavior, some behavior um, may also spring forth from, from the perception that we have. So even with us, you know, as Adventists, you know, um, we'll, we, we need to understand who we are individually and also in Adventism uh, so that we understand more or less how to behave as Christians, you know, and how um, to win others um, to Christianity, not necessarily just um, Adventism. So the first thing I wanted to out outline is um, what is um, a Seventh-day Adventist? So, from 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 the from the belief basis, right? Just looking at the beliefs. So it, it we stem from the idea, or we stem from the belief that first of all we are Bible believing Christians, right? Um, I have outlined a couple of texts here on the slide. Um, yeah, some people may know more texts. Uh, I'm not trying to prove a point. I'm just sharing where the ideas or the thoughts come from. So from Second, Second Peter um, chapter one, you find that, you know, the Bible does tell us that, you know, it, it's not like a thumbsuck book, you know, it's people that were inspired 
to write. So this comes as we believe that the Bible is the word of God. So all beliefs for Seventh-day Adventists should stem from the word of God because we have um, a strong a strong identity in the Bible type of thing. So we, we want to, or we are striving to be Bible believing Christians, right? Uh, I'm not saying that we have attained it. All I'm saying is that the belief or Seventh-day Adventism um, stems from the idea that we are Bible believing Christians, meaning we believe that the Bible is the word of God, right? There may be other theories which okay, the Bible is not the word of God, but I'm not here to discuss whether the Bible is true or false. But Adventism stems, or most of the belief stems from the idea that we believe that the Bible is the word of God, right? Um, so yeah, so I've outlined a couple of texts here that just basically say that, you know, it's not, it's not a book that was thumb sucked. Um, it's people that were inspired by God um, to speak, right? Oh, another thing is that if, if anyone wants to talk or ask a question, I'm not just sure how it happens. Uh, but yeah, you feel free to uh, lift, raise your hand or, or add or something like that. Yeah. I and then, we will we'll do that when you're done with your presentation. We'll have time when we can talk. So don't worry. Oh, okay. Thank you. So yeah. And then, um, so yeah, so as, hence I was saying, yeah. So we believe in the Bible. So, if, so our beliefs or Seventh-day Adventist beliefs should stem from the Bible. So it's a Bible believing Christian. And then from the name, obviously now, the name is then like in two compartments. So you have Seventh Day and then you have Adventist. So um, the Seventh Day come from um, us observing the Sabbath, us believing that the Seventh Day is the Sabbath and that God wants us to sort of like, um observe the sabbath um, as he did so from genesis chapter 2 you know we see that you know god uh, also keeps the sabbath right that's the first sort of like inception of the sabbath in the bible where god also rests from the from his work and says everything that he's done is good and then he rests so then the bible will go on in, in exodus chapter 20 after the children of israel had been in slavery where god then reminds the israelites um about the sabbath you know and yeah, so so forth and so forth. You see the Sabbath also coming up in the New Testament. Um, there are a couple of texts that I've outlined here. I'm not really gonna go into those texts. Um, they're just there as a, as a basis. Um, you know, you can write them down and read them at your own time if you do not know them. Um, I put them there for the benefit of all, right? And if there are additions or any other texts that you feel that are relevant, I'm sure you can just share on the on the chat um, side of the yeah. And then um, the most interesting thing about the Sabbath is this. So there, there, there are people who would say, would the seventh day or the Sabbath still be relevant? You know, there has been some thoughts that you know the Sabbath was introduced um, during the time of the Israelites, but we see that it's in creation, and then we see a couple of chapters before the law or the commandments are shared, you know, God gives them manna and he tells them how they're supposed to pick the manna. So we see that um, the Sabbath was kept, you know, from um, Genesis, you know, throughout. So it's just that it might not necessarily be mentioned as much, but we see that God required it to be observed even before the 10 commandments um, were sort of like given to the children of Israel um, at Mount Sinai. And then in Mark chapter two, um, God is saying, you know, the, the Sabbath is made for man, for man to sort of like rest and, you know, to detox and all of all, not necessarily detox, and I think not cut off, but um, it's just to, just to have some time with God, right? So this name now is put within this belief because there was a time that was lost. So, yeah, so it goes on um, in Matthew chapter 24, verses 20. Um, Jesus is speaking about his second coming. And you see that Sabbath observance is also sort of like required. That even though, you know, you will be under persecution, 
um, God still requires people to keep the Sabbath in winter and even in backs of like difficult times. And then um, God goes on further in Ezekiel where he says that, you know, the Sabbath is a mark between my people um, and myself. So to show that, you know, um, you're sort of like mine, um, this is one of the, well, this is a mark between me and you. And then in Isaiah chapter 66, we are told of the new heavens and the new earth. And we see that Sabbath observance is also um, put in that we will keep Sabbaths even in heaven. It's not something that we're just doing for them now, right? I just want to speak a bit about the sign between us and God. Now, the commandments, um, they reveal our relationship between um, me and God how much uh, love I have for God, per se. So when you love someone, you're, you, you're more likely to do what the, uh, pleases the other person. So for example, if I um, love my friend, Percy, and I understand that Percy hates uh, people who laugh at her, I will not be prone to laughing at her a lot because I understand that that is a dislike for her as well. So similarly with God, you know, um, you see that even with the, with the commandments that, you know, the first four, they outline our relationship between us and him. So if we love God, we will not have any other gods before him, you know, will not make any driven images and start worshiping them because we love God. So God is saying that, you know what, my sign that I know that you guys love me, that I know that you guys um, want to please me and that we're in a relationship and I love you and you love me. One of my tokens that shows that, you know, is that you observe the Sabbath. Um, another thing is this, when you look at even, uh, I think it's Luke chapter six, you know, and um, God is talking about the lilies that, you know, they don't work, they don't do anything but they rely on God, you know, how much more precious are we than them? So for example, if I decide that I want to go and work you know, and, and it's understandable, you know, I need to provide for my family, et cetera. But God is saying that if you trust me, you know, and you, you, you've placed your faith in me, um, why are you worried about things that I can do for you? If I am able to take care of the grass, take care of the lilies, take care of the birds and all of that. And if I know the numbers uh, of your head, of your hairs, you know, how much more am I able to do for you? So it's also another, uh, you know, a test of faith, a test of, you know, are, are we at the point where we trust the Lord enough to say, yes, uh, even though things are not going well, even though this is not going well, I'm going to fully trust in you. Yeah. Um, and then the second part of the name seven the Adventist then stems from, you know, the Advent, you know, when you Google um, Advent, you find that, you know, it, it basically means the, the second coming of Jesus. So, um, like, there's a huge history about where, okay, let me just break it down. But there was this guy, but to William Miller, so, you know, he started studying the Bible and he found out that, you know, Jesus is coming, right? And he made a incorrect sort of like prediction of Jesus coming. But later on, right, this group of people that were waiting for Jesus then started to study the Bible further and find out what exactly happened, right? I'm not really there. But this Advent part stems from the idea that it's people that are believing that Jesus will come that are anticipating that the Lord will come again and take them to heaven. So, um, and I also think it makes sense. For example, for, for most people, if I decide to follow Christianity or follow Seventh-day Adventism, I'm not saying that this is a good or justifiable reason. Um, what, every person asks, you know, what are you going to sort of like gain from this? What am I going to gain from having done this and done this and done that? So we are anticipating Jesus to come again. So the name 
outlines the fact that this Christian is a Christian that believes in Jesus, believes in the Bible, also observes the Sabbath and is longing and is waiting for the second coming of Jesus, right? So you see here, it takes like, you know, John chapter 14, verses one to, to three, with, which is saying that, you know, um, I will come again, you know, and, and I will, in my father's house, there are many mansions, you know, and I will come again and receive you to myself. So, and constantly, you know, even when he left, the angels, you know, tell them, no, why are you guys looking so sad? You know, this same Jesus that went up, you know, he will come back in the same manner, right? And there are many other texts then that also then, you know, Revelation chapter one, verse seven, where Jesus is saying that, you know, behold, he comes quickly. So this is basically the identifying marker from a biblical stance of what a Seventh-day Adventist Christian is, right? I'm going to read um, just a short quotation um, from, 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 from the book, The Faith I Live By, right? And it reads as follows, we are Seventh-day Adventists. Are we ashamed of our name? We have, we have answer, no, no, we are not. It is the name the Lord has given us. It points out the truth that it is to be the test of the church, that this may be, we must look ever to Jesus. The name Seventh-day Adventist carries the true features of our faith in front and will convict the inquiring mind. Like an arrow from the Lord's quiver, it will wound the transgressors of God's law and will lead repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. There are many who are looking to you to see what religion can do for you. If you are faithful in your God-given work, you will make right impressions and will lead souls in the way of righteousness. So when I read this um, quotation, and also going back to the memes that we, we just, that I pointed out um, earlier on, you know, seeing all those perceptions that the world um, sort of like has. And even from my experience, when you introduce yourself and you say, okay, this is, this is I'm, my name is Samu, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. There are a lot of things that people will say. But the last, uh, the last two sentences of this quotation says that many people are looking towards us right for them to get like impressions so if someone comes uh, or, or, or comes in contact with me and or a lot of adventists and next thing he the person um, encounters a lot of adventists fighting about uh, what can we fight about about positions in church then a person can make a generalization, which might not necessarily be correct, and say, oh, Adventist people are like one, two, three, four. So those perceptions, you know, you saw even the perceptions on fashion. <laughs> they show those old women with, you know, those old saggy clothes, like, you know, not that lupe or whatever. But, um, and, and they say Adventists, you know, they, they, this is how they are, which might not necessarily be the truth. Do you get what I mean? So these, there are certain people that have encountered a certain group of people that are like that. And then a generalization comes up and says, oh, okay, all of them, they are like this, right? So all of them, they're like cults. All of them, they like conspiracy theories and, and all these other funny things that they say that I would just like. So, and then it says that if you are faithful in your God-given work, you will make right impressions. So, it shows that it's not something that we should look at and be like, okay, should it right? As Nandaba would say that he, you know, we we eat cold food on Sabbath, we do this, we don't do that. Um, but it's for us to ensure as well, it's our God-given work to ensure that we make right impressions, right? Um, there's a quotation from the book Ministry of Healing. It says that nothing will win um uh, one thing that will win souls over to Jesus is a loving and a lovable Christian. So when you make that impression on others, then at least one day we'll see a meme that says, you know, Adventists, they are loving. Do you get what I mean? Um, Adventists are like this. Because we have made decided efforts, right, to make sure that we put, like, you know, good impressions on people, right, that will lead souls in the way of righteousness, right? And then, so I spoke a bit about this um, in terms of just outlining 
the, the point of the commandments and the love of God earlier on when I was talking about the Sabbath. So one of the things that, um, that I find really beautiful, right? And I realized this when I read the book, Thoughts on the Mount of Blessings. I think it's chapter two. And speaking about the law, so one of the, the paragraphs says that, you know, when um, the devil sinned, the thought that there was a law came as though it was something new to the angels because service in heaven is based on love. So the, the angels didn't know thou shall not commit adult, thou shall not murder, thou shall not, thou shalt uh, not make other, uh, make other gods or and all of that stuff. So they didn't know that. All they knew was love to God and love for one another. And that's where everything sprang from. So it wasn't um, legalistic. It wasn't that they would, ah, you know, you're eating meat. Ah, oh, you, you, you just broke the Sabbath. You, you just, you just did this, you know? It stemmed from the idea that I love you and I won't do this. So everything came from the point where um, we love God, we love each other. That's why I'm not gonna try and kill you. That's why I'm not gonna gossip about you. That's why I'm not gonna say evil things about you. So. I think it, 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 should, it should be the main idea for all Adventists to stem to become a loving and a lovable Christian. So um, yeah, Octander, like being lovable to others. So yeah, like, yeah, I don't know how to explain this, but it's showing love to people as opposed to being a dictator on people's lives. So even when we are sharing God's word, you know, sometimes we get so lost in trying to prove the person wrong that, you know what, Sunday is wrong. Um, doing this is wrong, you know, or whatever it is that we believe that is wrong. We are so fixated in getting the it, everything right, getting everything uh, biblically proof, I say, and we lose the main thing, which was love, right? We lose the cross. We lose um, the emphasis of love. So God shows us love, you know, but he says, my love can be outlined in these principles as well, just to help us because sometimes, you know, we, we might lose it. Um, I believe that the, the commandments were just given to sort of like help us or give us a guidance, you know, and hence God tries by all means you know, to show that, you know what, it's, everything should stem from, from love. We see that even in the life of Jesus, you know. Um, you know I, I've heard a lot of preachers talk about how Jesus' first miracle was him ch changing water into wine at a wedding. So a wedding is a festival, um, yeah, it's a festival scenery type of thing, you know, people are happy. So Jesus is there and he participates in ensuring that people are also happy there. So we see that he seeks us to be happy. He loves us and he wishes the best for us. We see Jesus going around healing people that were sick. You know, we see Jesus um, forgiving people that had been caught maybe in adultery or whatever it is. So we see that Jesus is not fixated in the outline of the law, but he's fixated in the principle of the law, which is love to God and love for one another. So if we were if we were looking at that, maybe some of these uh, misimpressions or misinterpretation might have not happened if we were fixated on that, right? Truth is important. I'm not saying that truth is not important. It's not important to sort of like, you know, have like a properly outlined uh, biblical discussion. It's very important, but it should not be lost, um, you know, at the point where we are saying, we won't go to people uh, that are sick because of the Sabbath. We won't, we won't help them because of the Sabbath. Let's leave them, let them die and let us, you know, um, go to church or something like that. We should not get to the point where we are fixated on the outline, the just a tick box, you know, I cooked, I washed before, you know, sunset and all of that. And everything just fixate on that and we lose sight of the bigger picture, which is the love of God, right? And then, I put this chart right here. So um, just a brief background about this. This is an 1883 chart. It's the Righteousness by Faith chart. 
before James White, um, the husband to Ellen White, died, just before he died, he said, let us come up with a way to be able to show our beliefs to other people, right? Um, uh, remember, we spoke about, okay, I've added like four. So I spoke about uh, the most important one is love to God, then the belief in the Bible. Then we have, um, yeah, the, the law of God and Jesus' second coming. So he's like, we want to be able to show, you know, to show the world without talking, right? What Adventism is, what basically is the message that we're trying to give to the world. So it says, we need to outline, find a, a chart to do a chart, right? So the first chart, I had it on my computer and I don't know, I was trying to look for it and I couldn't find it, but it's fine. So the first chart, I'm just gonna try and um, sort of like tell you and let's hope you have a good enough um, imagination, right? So you'll see here um, on this one, there's the cross, right? Okay, these are the disciples, that's Jesus' baptism. Um, that's Adam and Eve, that's Cain. So it's basically telling that whole story. And then um, the New Jerusalem and all of that. So it's basically outlining everything, all right? Now, um, the previous chart, it had the 10 commandments here. Where the cross is, the 10 commandments were here. And the cross of Jesus was there at the back. And the commands really big and in bold. And then you had all of these other pictures and the disciples and all of that. That was, that was just there at the back. So here, you can't really see the Ten Commandments. Um, yeah. So when that chart came out, this was in, in the 18, 1870 something, late 1870 something. Um, so James White looks at the chart and he says, no, this chart is wrong. You know? um, and the reason being is this chart is focused on the law of God. It's focused on the Ten Commandments, the Decalogue. You know? Um, and the and the cross is like there at the back, there at the back. And he's like, we need to redo this chart. And even on his deathbed, he says, we spend so much time arguing about how true the law of God is, how true all of these tick boxes are, this checklist is. And we have lost focus on a savior. So the new chart now is different. You know, you see um, the sacrifice there. We see um, Jesus, the center of, um, and even the title um, here of the chart, it says, in your Christ, the way of life. So a Seventh-day Adventist should not remove the cross from his life. You know, in Desire of Ages, there's really a beautiful statement. It says that to remove the cross is like blotting out the sun. So if we were to remove the cross from any Christian's identity, including ourselves, it's like removing the sun and being in complete, complete darkness, right? So the cross is the most important thing because this is where salvation or this is where life is. So even in those memes that you saw, no meme showed that we are people that believe that Jesus died on the cross for us, that we are people that need a savior, that we are sinful people that need the power of Jesus. None of those memes show that. It showed a, a, an old white man who's judgmental, busy telling people, you must not eat like this, you must not dress like this, you must not do like this. But never does any of those memes, or never have I ever had anyone say that, you know, Adventists are people who believe that Jesus died on the cross to save us. It's always, they believe they go, you must go to church on Saturday. They believe you must dress like this. They believe you must eat like this. They believe you must, you must, you know, and all of these other things. They believe that you know, the commandments are not done away with. But never have I ever heard, okay, maybe other people in their experience, you know, maybe not just uh, also generalize. Maybe in your experience, you've met people that say, but you know what, I've met Adventists that believe in the cross, you know, who are focused too much on these other things. Like I said before, you know, we're we'll focused on winning like stuff like arguments. I've heard someone say that we, we want to win the argument and lose the soul. So James White is like, that is wrong. And at the in his deathbed, he says one of the things that he regrets was 
wasting their time talking about the law as opposed to talking about a Jesus that saves. So another identifying mark, a very, very important identifying mark for a Seventh-day Adventist Christian is the cross. And to remove it from us and from our identity would be like blotting out the sun. All right. All right, and then now I'm, I'm going to also go into um, to this as well. So it, it, in general, like, you know, all church or all institutions that are made by people, you know, um, obviously, you know, people are not perfect. We, we know that. Um, I'm not perfect. I don't know about you, but, um, and because people are not perfect, you know, we won't necessarily achieve that, that very, um, from my first quotation where I, where I said that, okay, no, I didn't say that, but um, from this quotation where it says that um, if you were faithful in your God-given work, you will make right impressions and will lead souls in the way of action. Ideally, this is what we are supposed to do, hearing, um, being faithful to our God-given work and making right impressions. But we, we, we are imperfect people, right? And we won't necessarily achieve that, like, you know, from the get-go, you know, and we won't achieve that, like, on our own, like, Jay, you know, me, Samu, I won't also be able to achieve that. I personally know I might have given wrong impressions and led people the wrong way um, a couple of times in my life, you know, many times, I'm going to say a couple, um, in my life, of what Adventism is, you know, um, because of my own distorted views. But now it's a, it's a matter of also now understanding that we are imperfect people, right? So I, I put there Matthew chapter 13, right? The book of Matthew chapter 13 um, has a couple of, I think, two parables. So the second one from verse 24, where it talks about the wheat and the tears, right? So um, basically that, you know, at, at night there was an evil person that came in and sold in tears. So we cannot necessarily expect the church to be perfect. The church is not perfect because it's made or it's comprised of people that are sinful and are erring people like myself, you know? And one of the other reasons I also like, love the Bible, you know, um, I put there in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, where it tells us that, you know, the Bible has given us all these stories and these are examples, examples for us, you know, so that we don't lose faith. So if the Bible had only perfect people, like everyone there was just like, you know, I'm struggling with appetite, pow, you know, gets it out of there. I'm struggling with adultery, you know, I've got this under, you know, I just pray once, it's over. Do you know what I mean? Um, but no, it's not like that. We, we see Abraham. Abraham lies so many times, you know. Um, but we don't see God packing up and leaving him just like that, you know. Um, he lies so many times. He doesn't trust God, you know, and God constantly needs to reassure him that, you know what, I'm going to bless you, um, and, you know, with the seed, but he constantly is just trusting God. He ends up doing his own things to try and, you know, get um, the, get his seed or multiply or have children, like his own way, as opposed to what God has said. So the Bible itself does not have people that are perfect. It's people that are striving, you know, and they don't give up and they have faith in God until they obtain it. You know, we, we see even um, Jacob, for example, you know, um, a, a thief, a supplanter type of thing, you know, he, he does so many things, you know, in his life to try and, you know, cut, you know, and steal or whatever it is. Um, and God does not give up on that person constantly until they obtain or get to the point where they have faith and righteous and they become righteous people. So similar even with the church, you know, and even we ourselves can also be very hard on the church itself. So you see even those people that, you know, are on Facebook in that group, and there are people who are always constantly posting, this is how Adventism should supposed to be, this is how Adventism is supposed to dress, this is how Adventism is supposed to, do you know what I mean? And they have all these wild and crazy, I'm not going to say wild, 
participate. But they have really big, um, yeah, ideologies of what ideas of what Adventists are supposed to, and they'll and they'll say this, 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 and that, and they're constantly um, on people's cases. Why are you wearing makeup? Why are you wearing lipstick? Why are you wearing those shoes and all of that stuff? You know, um, yeah, and always accusing the brethren of many things, right? Forgetting that in the church or the church is like a hospital. Um, it's made up of broken people. You know, the Bible itself says Jesus didn't come for people that were okay. That's what I said even before. No meme shows us as people that need a savior, right? We are just, I don't know, born ready to be perfect or righteous or whatever it is. So forgetting that the Bible itself has people that are murderers, has people that are adulterers, has people that are thieves, you know. You see, even Jesus, you know, comes from the genealogy of Rahab, who's a prostitute. And you see, even the children of Israel, even when we speak about them, we always look at them as those people, they were evil. They didn't listen to God and all of that stuff. And forgetting that human beings are not perfect. So another reason that I'm Adventist is because it is an imperfect church with imperfect people, people that are not perfect, but are striving constantly to be like Jesus or to attain righteousness. We are not perfect people. We are in need of a savior just like everybody else, All right? And then I'm going to read from the book, Christ Triumph at page 123. It says that when difficulties arise in any branch of the course, as they surely will, for the church militant is not the church triumphant. So it says when, when causes or things rises, like when we are fighting about certain things, those things are supposed to happen because we are imperfect people. Right. It's not it's not a taboo thing. Like, oh, how can they do this? How can they do this? These pastors, they're not perfect people. It says, because we are the church militant, not the church triumphant. This is all heaven is watching to see what will be the cause of those who are entrusted with sacred responsibility. Right. Then it says, some will stumble. Some will give heed to seducing spirits. Some will choose darkness rather than light because they are not true to God, okay? Like their masters, those who are abiding in Christ will not fail, no be discouraging. So it says clearly that there will be ups and downs. There will be times where people do wrong things, right? Some will end up, you know, choosing darkness as opposed to light or not being true to God, right? But others, will abide in Christ and will not fail, nor be discouraged. So I like the part where it says that will abide in Christ. So abiding in Christ is so important. So in order for them to sort of like stay um, constantly fixated, they need to be in Jesus. There will come certain things along the way to try and. So when you might see me do something wrong, you know, um, let it not also, I'm not saying that, you know, you shouldn't reprove each other or help each other out, but let it not necessarily be such a taboo thing because the church is not triumphant. We are not at that point. We are still the church militant. So we are still helping each other out. Do you hear what I mean? The grace that made you join Adventism or made you become a Christian will still be the grace that pulls you through those difficult times, you know? And it also teaches us to show compassion one to another. This morning, I was reading John chapter two, and I was looking at the story of the woman caught in adultery, and these Pharisees are pushing um, sort of like her to, to Jesus, you know, and, you know, to the point where they even say, she was caught in the act, you know, the very, very act, you know. Um, I don't know, my mind imagines her, I don't know if she was fully dressed, I don't know how she got out or whatever. And I'm thinking, so people can get to a point where they're so heartless, you know, and they're so hard on people that I want to die, like they don't care, you know? Um, it's the law, do you get what I mean? Forgetting that this church is not here triumphant. 
I mean, if, if we were perfect, you get what I mean? Jesus would have come a long time ago, gone to heaven, done. But the mere fact that we are still here shows us that we are so far from being perfect because um, when you read Christ's object lesson, it says that, you know, and as much as we are saying that we are waiting on Jesus and sometimes we're like, yo, treat Jesus, go to Tuesday type of thing. But Jesus is actually waiting for, for us. When the bride is ready, he will come. So if Jesus is not coming, it shows us that we as a people are not ready to receive him yet, All right? And so it should teach us to also show love and compassion, you know, to others. And, and I like how Jesus does it, where he says to them, you know, he that is without sin, let him first cast a stone on this woman. Let him be the first person to throw. And then everyone starts to think, yo, or whatever it is, yo, I did this, I did that. And then they all walk away and, they, and she's left with Jesus. So it's so interesting that Jesus has to remind people. And I think even we ourselves need to also be reminded that we are also um, sinful and we are erring human beings. And we need to learn to lift each other up when another stumbles and point each other to the cross. All right. Um, and then, so I, I spoke a bit about this earlier on as well. Um, I'm just going to talk about Jesus. So when Jesus was also here um, on earth, you know, um, Jesus mingled with the people, you know, he, you know, he sat with um, you know, people, the publicans, okay, in this case, publicans. So to, to um, just to, yeah, just from Matthew chapter 9, verses 10 and 11, we see here that they say, um, you know, um, Jesus is eating with publicans. Sorry, with publicans and sinners, you know, and you know the Pharisee, the Pharisees um, see him say, "Why is your master eating with publicans and sinners?" So, you know, why does he associate with such people? Do you get what I mean? What are you doing with those people? And all of that stuff. Um, but when you read it. Um, down in Matthew chapter nine, you know, later on in the verses, Jesus also outlines says, I did not come for people that, that are okay. I came for people that are sick. I came for sinners and I came to save the lost. So an Adventist is one who understands that we need Jesus to be able to show love, to be able to keep the commandments of God and also for us to be ready for his second coming. So we need Jesus more than ever. And in that, it does not necessarily mean that we are now better than other people, that we cannot associate with other people because those people are sinners. You know, to that point where we are like that Pharisee that prays, where he says, you know, um, well, thank you that I'm not like this publican that does this, does that, um, and all of that stuff. Sometimes, we actually think of ourselves like that. Another story that we're told of in, in Luke chapter seven, you know, Mary, um, you know, who, who's known as an adulterer, she does something nice for Jesus, washes feet, anoints his feet. And, and Simon is like, remember, Simon is the one who had um, leprosy. He's like, how could he? You know, how could he, how could he let her wash um, his feet? You know, if she knew, if only he knew who was washing his feet, you know. And he just answers the question and, you know, he tells a parable about people that are forgiven, that, you know, the one that owes the most will be the one that shows the most gratitude, you know. So sometimes we also get to a point where we grade our sins, you know. Um, I think society, certain sins are considered like taboo. Um, if I lie, for example, um, yeah, yo, no, I'm a man. Like, but it's it's not gonna be as a as taboo as if I get pregnant. You know, they're like, oh, you know, that's a huge catastrophe. You know, how could you type of thing? You know, as opposed to, um, you know, someone who lied or someone who, I don't know, coveted people's things and all of that stuff. So there's there's sort of like a, a grading. So sometimes we also think, hey, yeah, you know, um, I'm a sinner, but ah. Pissy, you know, she, yeah, no, she did this, 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 and that. 
<laughs> as opposed to, um, yeah, as opposed to you. So similar even with him, he had forgotten his need for a savior. And now he's saying, okay, no, no. But Jesus, you know, outlines it very beautifully and he teaches a beautiful lesson that we think, you know, sometimes we think that, you know what, in heaven, you know, we'll be like, sort of like the, you know, the heroes that saved the day because we knew the truth. And in actual fact, those that have been forgiven much, they are the ones that show the most gratitude, you know? Um, and, and I, one of the reasons why I'm Adventist, like I said, because it's because the church is also imperfect. And because I'm also an imperfect person who's trying to be like Jesus, I'm in need of a savior. And that's one of the other reasons why I am Adventist, right? Um, and then I got this quotation from the book, Great Controversy, right? This is chapter 42. I don't put the page number, but it's chapter 42. It says here, all right, just speaking on more or less on, on, on the notes that I was talking about from the previous uh, uh, story of, of Simon and Mary. It says, nearest the throne are those who were once zealous in the cause of Satan, right? So she's talking about the picture like in heaven those people that are close to the throne of God. It says, those that were zealous in the cause of Satan. You know, when someone is zealous, is someone who's willing to bring others to this cause. So it's not like people who were saying, hey, uh, come let us worship the devil. You know, come let us, you know, those who were zealous, you know, those whom we might call atheists, ungodly, heathen, whatever it is those and says but who plant who were plant um, as brands from the burning have followed their savior with deep intense devotion okay who were plant as brands from the burning have followed their savior with deep intense devotion next are those who perfected christian characters in the midst of falsehood and infidelity those who honor the law of god when the Christian world declared it void. So close to God, it's those ones. Then it's just, then after, you know, uh, it's those that honor God when the world, you know. So it shows us as well that, you know, we are all in need of the savior, but God prizes those that have been forgiven much as well because their service and their love as well, you know, it, it, it goes a bit more extra. You know, you've heard people say, you know, um, I'm not saying that this is true, but, you know, most likely um, people that have, you know, received Adventism, you know, through um, maybe a Bible study or were converted maybe at school by someone or whatever it is, um, they tend to be more zealous for the cause than as opposed to someone who was raised, not being exposed, to a lot of things um, in the world, they sometimes may not appreciate the truth that, that has been given, right? They might not show as much gratitude because for them, it's, it's, it's not a big deal, you get me? So for example, sometimes I've seen even um, at church, sometimes we get used to things like text, you know? If I was to say to us, let's open the book, um, in the book of John chapter three, verse 16, most of us are not gonna open. Um, and, and, and not, yeah, mainly also because we know it, but there's, there's that thing of, uh, John 3 verse 16, for God's love, it becomes like a ritual, it becomes, it's normal. But for someone else who is living their lives, who has been burdened with sin for their whole lives, you know, the thought that there is a savior or that there's someone died on the cross to pay for all the wrongs that I've done, for them, that is a liberation. Do you get what I mean? For them, it's like, wow, it's 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 gobsmacking for them, you know. But for 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 your for most, you know, most people might or most Christian Adventists, it might be, uh, it's a common text. We know it, you know. And even if someone were to tell you about it, you know, or decide to to even preach about it, they might be like, ah, as it's not, uh, doesn't make you. Um, glued to the screen, doesn't keep us, you know, excited, 
um, it's just any other text. It doesn't have that effect on us. But for someone else who has, who knows the depths of where they come from, who knows all the things that they have done and who's seeking for liberation from their sins, who's seeking for liberation from pain that has been caused by their own deeds. When they, they find the truth or they find Jesus, they find liberation, they find happiness, they find joy. And for them, you know, it becomes, a, it's a beautiful thing, right? So um, I'm, I'm, I'm just showing these things to, to try and conscientize us to, to the fact that we are imperfect people, drawing other imperfect people. And we should not at any point think that because we know the truth um, or we're in the know that we are better than these other people. All right. Um, okay. So, all right. My presentation, I didn't want it to be long. I was planning for 45 minutes. I'm glad I kept to 45 minutes. Yes. Um, I will open up for, for discussions, all right? But before I open up for discussion, there's one last quotation. I did not really add it, but it came to my mind, right? And this quotation is found in the book of the last day events. And I think in one of the testaments, right? And it speaks about Adventism, right? An Adventist, right? And it says that, right? Seventh-day Adventists have been chosen by God as a peculiar people separate from the world, right? And it says, by the great cleaver of truth, God has separated them. And then it says that their main work Right, the main work is to reveal or to be light bearers to others. I'm paraphrasing now. And then it says, they are to let nothing else absorb their attention. So our main focus should be, right, to reveal light to others. And I, and I outline that, that nothing will win people over than a loving and a lovable Christian, right? So our main thing is to reveal love to other people. And, and this is, we are to let nothing else absorb our attention. So you are fixated on this. Like, let's look at some two cases for the life of Jesus. For example, the first one, um, Jesus is... He, he's, he gets lost when they're going to the temple, right? He gets lost and, and they find him after three days busy talking with the, the priest and all that stuff. And the parents are like, why? Why did you get lost and all that stuff? And then his response is like, you know, did you not know that um, I, I was about my father's business? So in Jesus' life, Jesus came according to Matthew chapter one, verses 21, to save sinners. And so his main thing was, I want to save people, right? And I'm not going to let anything else distract me, right? Now we see that even after he had met or had that conversation with the woman at the well, and the disciples come to him, it's like, hey, what are you doing with that lady? Uh, you know, what about food and all of that stuff? And then, and then Jesus is like, I, guys, my meat is to do the will of God. So focus, he knows what, um, he knows what his, his main aim was and that it, and, 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 and he didn't let anything else absorb his attention. So what am I saying? Sometimes we get so fixated in, in things or get distracted in things that are not gospel oriented, that are not revealing the love of God or showing love to others or helping us spread um, the gospel to others. And we start getting fixated in those things. We start getting fixated in, hey, should we wear dogs? Should we wear ties? Should we do this? Should we do that? And we lose sight of the big picture, which was winning souls to Jesus. Because we are busy with all these other things. The main thing there, now we are spending board meetings discussing, hey, who must be sanctioned? Who must, well, this must be done to this person. And the big picture is win souls, all right? And then, my last, my last, my very last. Um, in the book of Matthew, right? It says that, Matthew chapter 24, and this gospel shall be preached 
and to the whole world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Jesus will not come if the gospel is not preached unto the whole world. So there are times where people will see, hey, this Pope came in, a Jesuit Pope, and, they, and everyone is talking about a lot of things. Hey, this, this, this is how they're gonna do this, this is how they're gonna, no. If we preach the gospel, that is when Jesus will come. Once everyone knows about the love of God, that is when Jesus will come. Jesus will not come because of a Jesuit Pope or any other thing. He will come when everyone knows about his love, when everyone knows that Jesus has died on the cross for people um, to get salvation. That is what will bring Jesus. So a Seventh-day Adventist, like I said, to remove the cross from us is like blotting out the sun in our lives. That, that thing. That's how deep it is. So we are to reveal the cross to others for Jesus to come. So I think the book, um, I think it's the book of education where it says that it is the privilege for every Christian to not only to look forward to the second coming of Christ, but also to hasten it. So if we love God and we want to be with God for the rest of our lives, why do we are supposed to be revealing love to others so that Jesus can come? All right, so um, yeah, so that's basically what I wanted to share. I will open up or give hand over to our facilitator uh, to take it further. Thank you. All right, thank you so much for that one. Uh, much appreciated. God bless you. It was a beautiful presentation. Okay, now now it's time that we start talking within ourselves. So get maybe get a pen and um, and uh, a, a paper where you can be writing questions. Okay, so it's all about. Why am I an Adventist? And I think from the presentation, the take homes are uh, that Adventists, the two part name, uh, seventh day, which, which details the day that we worship, which is the Sabbath, the seventh day of the week. And then secondly, Adventists that were anticipating the second coming of our Lord and Savior. So that basically on first point primary basis defines who we are, those that worship on the seventh day, and are waiting for the second coming. And I love how she put it across as I wait for hands. So if you want to say something, all you're supposed to do is just put your hand up on the platform, then we can start talking within ourselves. Osama put us brought an idea that the world is looking at us, that the world is watching us, that the world is looking for uh, Christ through us. And that's a very important thing. And, and then having said that then, it means that we are like the letters written for the world to read. Now, she spoke about perceptions of what Seventh-day Adventists are. That's from the world to a Seventh-day Adventist. And I think, again, she spoke about perceptions that Adventists have within themselves. To say Adventists have a problem with Adventists, much as maybe the world has a problem with Adventists. Maybe it's time now that the picture be repainted or totally blotted out and a new picture on Adventism comes through. Okay, so why? Am I invited Adventist? I've got two hands coming up here. I had a couple of comments there. Let's get excited as we talk about why you are, why am I an Adventist? And maybe another thing just to throw in uh, more into this is um, the, the, the joining part of Adventism. Um, I speak from my perspective. I'm an Adventist because I was born in a, in a family which goes to the Adventist church. There could be many like that here. Some are Adventists because they were brought up by their friends or their friends brought them to church. Some are Adventists because they actually dated Adventists when they were not Adventists and ended up being Adventists or gotten married to Adventists. Some come through as uh, a next door neighbor's religion. Maybe the next door neighbors are just going to church and all those kind of things and you follow through. Many other reasons. And now we need to go further more than just how we got introduced into the faith, by, but why really we are still in this particular type of religion. I've got two hands coming up here, quickly in quick succession. I've got Van Heden. Why am I an Adventist? So let me take the hands here, and then if there are any questions, I'm going to keep getting ready. Then the questions or comments will respond on all of that. Let's go. Van Heden. Speaking of uh, uh, converts, new converts being zealous, for the to do the work of uh, of God, I'm reminded of a certain incident. You know, uh, whenever new converts come into the Adventist uh, Church, they're raring to go, 
and they ready to do the work, it is usually us that have been sitting there for years, especially in the pews in the back seat that uh, pull them uh, back. A couple of years ago, uh, not so many years ago, there was a certain gentleman that joined the church. His role at his church, I've forgotten the church that he attended, was being a church planter. When I listened to his um, CV, I was impressed because uh, this guy here could uh, do, I don't remember the, the numbers, but he could do something like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, anything between 20 and 50 churches in a year. Now, this guy left that, his church, it was a Sunday church, and he joined the Adventist church. Then he came in and he said, I feel I am underutilized because I'm not used to this. Come to church in the morning, uh, have the Sabbath school uh, discussion, sermon. We go and sit for two hours at lunch and then come back into church, have another discussion. That's not me. I go out and I look for, for, for um, people and I open up a church. And he did that. He, he, he happened to go to a soup kitchen one day. He found, and people were gathering up for, for food. And he noticed that this was a potential congregation. He created a congregation out of that. I think that congregation still stands today. Now, what happened is, as he did all this year, the church started pulling him down. The church started fighting with him. You'd find the guy in tears. He would cry because of the terrible things that the church said to him. And they eventually pushed him out. Now, if you speak of Adventism to that guy, he wants nothing to do with it. I don't even know which church he's gone to, but he wants nothing to do with Adventism. We say that we are a hospital. Maybe we need to relook at the hospital that we have because the patients are running the hospital and they're running it out. Miss. Okay, thank you so much, Van Helen, for that one. We say we are a hospital. Are we the hospital that saves lives or the hospital that kills the hospital of death right there. I think a couple of things that you put across as I try to excite people enough to get uh, talking on this is, is maybe some of the biggest problems that we have as Adventists or in us trying to look at Adventists is, is, that, is, is Adventists. By that I mean um, people that have been in the church for too long are a problem. Like very much one of the biggest problems that the church is a headache. But I want to discuss more of that. Come on, look. Go ahead, tell us more about why we are Adventists and what are we getting from this, all this that we've just been learning about. The hospital, go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Lanke. All right. Um, if ever there was another church that fits my understanding of the Bible and my understanding of Bible prophecy, I would join it and leave Adventism. Um, the reason being is because most of the time I look at people, what they do, and I get affected by <clears throat> what people do around me and church people as well, I'm mostly church people, even in my business. Like when I work with church people, like, oh, it's a stress. <clears throat> but anyway, I'm not there. <clears throat> um, a few things that I wrote down here. Uh, on the speaker, okay, the first thing, I like how she views Adventism or how our speaker views Adventism and the point that she's bringing, Uti, <clears throat> we are supposed to be loving people. And hey, people who think they understand prophecy, hey, those people are angry, especially those who think they understand prophecy and they advocate for vegetarianism. Most people are angry at sinners. I don't know why. 
Like you don't feel the love when a vegetarian is explaining uh, the dangers of sea. You, you feel like, hey, I'm gonna die here. After this presentation, I must repent or I will get killed. <clears throat> um, you know, so I like that point that like, you know, we must mainly show love, practically we must love people. I know, and um, but now having said that, also it brings a question, we have two sides. We have those who say, Amasupatsila says, hey, don't do this, don't do that. Like they kind of police other people. We accuse them from, we are saying they're accusers of brethren. At the same time, we're using the same tool of accusing them for accusing us. <laughs> You know, we like we 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 say we call ourselves um, the light. People must see light from us, but at the same time, I feel like we <clears throat> we are advocating for being liberal, for living like anyone in the world. Yet you're calling yourself a light. Like for an example, uh, <clears throat> we <clears throat> let's say earrings. I'm just trying to think of something very small, or maybe what tight pants, you know? <clears throat> now, if one stands up and talk about, uh, talk against the tight pants, like preachers should not wear tight pants, they disturb ladies because, you know, <clears throat> or they disturb people, older people that like you are kind of naked, like we see the whole thing. Um, <clears throat> now, if one stands up preaching against that, then, I will stand up and say, why are you accusing someone for, for the dress code? Those are petty things. Let's show love on people. Now the question comes, now, how will one understand Christ when you are wearing just like them who don't understand Christ? Or how will one understand or the love of God when you are behaving just like one who don't, who don't love God or don't know God, you know? Like what is Grovanab or Spozanab, you know, at the same time we're saying uh, we are the light of the world. So so there I think maybe the, the speaker may kind of enlighten us with it. How do we show the love and how to show the behavior that we are on the light, we should behave this way. And secondly, um, <clears throat> okay, our speaker mentioned we Jesus is will not come. Um, until until we are perfect, or maybe she said, "Duguti, it is we." Jesus has not yet come because we are not perfect, uh, so we, we shouldn't expect people to be perfect. I'm not sure if I, get, I got it right there. <clears throat> so in my thinking, I'm like, is the coming of Jesus dependent on the perfection of people? Uh, is the coming of Jesus dependent on His love? towards his people. Um, well, I'm sure she's writing down that one. <clears throat> and um, well, just an overview. Uguti, imperfection, uh, in my opinion, I think imperfection is a state that needs to be changed. And it is because of imperfection that Jesus died. So if we kind of try to support imperfection, well, we are not perfect, so please don't point fingers at us. So if we kind of try to protect imperfection, we are trying to kind of support what caused Jesus to hang on the cross. I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'm clear there. And my last point is that uh, the, the presentation or the topic of the presentation, it says, why am I an Adventist? So I don't know whether it's my mind or it's my spiritual understanding or it's my or saying we look already. I feel like I didn't hear that on the presentation. Why am I an Adventist? Like um, now I'm sitting with my, my, my daughter here. <clears throat> she's, um, she's not an Adventist. She worshiped elsewhere. <clears throat> um, she was excited. She wanted to know. What are the reasons for one to become an Adventist? So yesterday we were actually talking about, she was saying she's looking for a church, a new church. Uh, so I like, no, come to my church. We'll go through this together. 
So she was actually looking forward to the pointers of why would one become an Adventist. And she is kind of disappointed. Like as we speak, she's sitting outside playing with her phone. She just feels like Uguti, we just addressed what Adventists they are fighting. Adventists they just point fingers at each other. So yeah. Okay, I think let me stop here. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you so much for that one. Much appreciated. Okay. I think Usam is noting those questions and Julie so she will answer. As well as others on the platform who are able to answer as well, please do come through. Um, I think uh, just to, to cover up our speaker there, I think she spoke about the reason for being an Adventist and she outlined, outlined them pretty well. Uh, it's a church of imperfect people. It's a church that believes in the Bible, particularly the seventh day and also the fact that we're waiting for the second coming of our Savior. A church that believes in the mission, which is to preach the gospel. And again, I think she put it across to say, not just to preach the gospel, but more importantly, to be loving and lovable while at it. I think that world chart pretty much summed up uh, many of the reasons. Believing in Jesus, in the law, in the perfection of man, in the ultimate coming of our Savior, and, 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 and more importantly, in making sure that Jesus becomes the shining armor, the shining light to the world and all. I think she put it across. But anyway, Samu will respond to that. Two more hands that I'll give to Samu. And let me give to Usa Kodi and Z. Boys will come through after Samu is done. Sagodi, go ahead. Uh, 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 thanks very much for it. Uh, maybe before I say what I want to say, uh, um, for it, Kumalo's lapas packed something. Uh, maybe I will try to to give out uh, what I think uh, so that it remains my own perspective. Uh, maybe for the for for for, for 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 or maybe for the question at you uh, like uh, the topic uh, suggested that we are going to hear reasons of why. We we advent. I think uh, OCC has put it very very clearly, and that's our standpoint as as Adventists. And uh, I think Mina Lelesen was more of giving us uh, an eye opening view of how people see us as as Adventists. So maybe that question. Uh, even when uh, you need to answer it. It's not for Usis Ukuku yet. I think maybe you have brought a question that can help us uh, uh, find a way of making people uh, see what Adventism is according to how you you, you view it. But Mina, I, I wanted to say I'm really convinced. I'm really. Uh, I'm really happy because I, I think that's what I expected to hear from such a, 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 a discussion. So I would say maybe most of the questions that we will ask Usis about Adventism are the questions that we are supposed to answer as Adventists. But uh, unfortunately, maybe on this platform, we have a lot of people who are still needing to know who we are. But now maybe going to what I wanted to say, I want to thank OCC uh, because, you know, it's nice to, to see women presenting such deep things because usually it used to be men who, who are so zealous about why they are Adventists and the reason why I'm this, the reason why I'm I'm this in the church, and I want to say, Akubele Pambi, that's very wonderful. See, our bongela, all ladies. Right. Uh, I loved the meme Ega Koko Loana, the 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 grandma who was like it said, uh, how the National Geographic views us. It's like this this woman is trying to say. I'm not part of this world, but the hands are touching the head, the, 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 the earth, of which there's no way she can claim that <laughs> she's not part of the, the, the earth system. She can't uh, isolate herself 
from the world. So it it went on to raise a question, why is Adventism? Because uh, since the discussion is, uh, why am I ad an Adventist? The question comes and says, why are you guys seem to be isolating yourself from what the world is, is, is doing, what the flow of the world, like talk of societal issues, you, you seem to be going uh, on, an, on an island of your own when it comes to these issues. You don't wanna address, you're always clinging to the coming Lord who is coming, uh, we don't know when. So why are you isolating yourself when you can't live without this world? Mm. And then maybe mm. the, the, the other, um, the other thing, uh, I was I was looking at when she talked about the truth. I mean, how we 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 lack love. I thought about the thief on the cross. I think that lesson is for us Adventists. When Christ promised a thief uh, there and then on the cross that I will I will be with you in paradise. To me, I learned that Christ can save a person without the help of a human being. A person can be saved with us contributing anything. So why would Jesus want, want us to show our lifestyle to people? Because we are called to be a benefit to the people. We, we, we are not called to, to take people to heaven or whatever. We are called to share his love. So to me, it opened an, uh, 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 my eyes as to the, the role of Adventism in the world. Since I talked about that meme, we can't isolate ourselves from the social issues. We are here to be help to the people. People mustn't be asking questions about who we are when actually uh, we are Adventists, unless uh, we are practicing something else. Maybe. The last part, so that I won't be taking a lot of time, right? There's a, I was looking for a statement that Ellen White said, but I got another one from this guy. It's called Paul David Tripp. He says, truth said out of, uh, I mean, without love ceases to be truth. Truth said without love ceases to be truth. Why? Because it has hidden agendas that are twisting that truth if there's no love. And then he says, love without, uh, that is not motivated by truth is not love because it has divorced from the, 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 the reason why it's supposed to be given. So as Adventists, no matter how convincing our truths are, no matter how deep and how powerful we present the truth that we say is the truth without loving maybe first uh, our brethren because people are watching us in forest Mta. Oh, this guy he doesn't talk to Mta. this guy hates he yeah, we know he, this guy he, he, he always passes abazalo and he doesn't even give them a right but they're going to the same church and then they are telling us of jesus who is coming it it doesn't make sense. So the love is the, is the one that makes sense. Have you ever seen even Ubuntu? Uh, you give them something so, so simple, but that the relationship is what counts to people. The love that you, you, you give is what will make them appreciate what you give them more. Whether you give them the whole world, but without love, it doesn't make sense. So I was trying to say, maybe we need to look at Adventism in a different anger. We need to be relevant to the society. All right, thank you so much, Sakoti, for that one. I appreciate it. Let me give over to Sam and get ready, Sam. I'm going to unmute you now. So a couple of things of things are coming up. Uh, the issues to do with um, Adventism and its role. Maybe one of the reasons why we probably are Adventists again 
is, is because we, we, we are part of a church that wants to take an active role in, in, in portraying the love of Jesus in all aspects and issues. And I don't know if the church has taken a back seat. Some of you will come through on that one, maybe. I'm just trying to unmute you quickly here and maybe put on your video as well. Um, um, is the church taking a back seat? Uh, corona exposed us um, as to our relevance or rather our massive irrelevance. Do they miss us? Does the world miss us? Maybe not at all. And the implications, the impressions that the world has about Seventh-day Adventist, you, you ask people, um, well, where I work, I told them I don't work on a Sabbath. Then they said, what is the Sabbath? Told them I'm a Seventh-day Adventist and said, what is that? You know, and people are so clueless about us. And maybe because we are so uh, uh, on the corner of things, we look like a cult as National Geographic would put it across. So let's get that exciting. So I'm, I'm trying to unmute you. Please accept that. And I'm looking for you as well. I'm asking you to have your video on. I'm waiting just on you there. Um, there you are. Go ahead, girl. Take us through. Okay. Wait. So um, you want me to go through an order, right? Yeah, in whichever. You just bring it across the way you want to. When you're done, then we'll take it up the other next set of hands. Okay. So um, the role of Adventism. Can I just outline a thing that I noted whilst um, people were commenting? So um, the whole liberal conservative thing, right? Um, so finding a balance to Christianity um, is, is, is not one that is easy. Do you get what I mean? Um, I am not advocating conservativeness and neither am I advocating um, anyone being liberal. I was advocating people being Christian. And, and, I, and, I, and I said that, you know, the quote from Minister of Healing that says that you know, nothing will win the um, souls over than a, more than a loving and a lovable Christian, right? That was my main talk. You know, I was not advocating for neither um, Sopatela or liberal um, Christian. I was advocating for us being like Jesus. Yeah. And then um, there was a question that was um, outlined here that says, you know, how do we show love? You know, um, I think Kumalo asked that question. How do we show love? So I guess people um, would like, you know, a couple of practical lessons. But guys, I, people are different. You know, one of the things I think we need to understand, the reason why even the presentation was not um, saying, why am I an Adventist? I believe, you know, like one, two, three, like, you know, as if we're in a debate. It, it, it's, it's not. There's something that the Umtandas all spoke about, how different people have joined the church in different ways. So Umtandas are joined because, you know, he grew up in an Adventist home. Others might have joined because they went to you know, school at bits and then you know their friends introduced them. Others, you know, I know a girl that was introduced to Adventism because of how nicely Adventists dress, like in terms of like pencil skirts and heels and all of that. That everyone has a weird and wonderful way of how they became Adventists. That means our personal experiences are going to be different. How we show love will might not necessarily also be really the same. I cannot come here now and say to you, you show love by one, two, three, four, five. But we see in the life of Jesus that he just um, chose to seek well for people. When you seek well for people, you don't want them to be sick. You don't want them to be in pain. You want them to be happy and all of that. So we see that in the life of Jesus. Constantly, he's revealing love in those who are as he's seeking well. But how we'll actually now you know, get to the nitty gritty of how we do it, you know, it will be very different for different people, you know? And then, um, so then uh, the role of, of Adventism, basically, right? And oh, and the other question that I was asked was based on the whole uh, imperfection. You know, Kumal asked, you know, is Jesus not just gonna come? Um, is, he, is he waiting for people to be perfect? Right? I'll, I'll read a quotation here. I said the quotation is found in Christ's object lesson. Um, you can ask where the pages are. This is Christ Object Lesson Chapter 3, right? And it's page 63. It says here, Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in his church. When the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. Just to answer that question, where did that come from? 
when the character of Christ it says, then the next paragraph says, it is the privilege of every Christian not to only look, look for, but to hasten the coming of the Lord Jesus. We are, we, we're, we're all who profess his name bearing fruit to his glory. How quickly the world would have been, uh, the word, um, the whole world would have been sown with the seed of the gospel. gospel. Quickly, the last great harvest would have been ripened and Christ would have come together the precious grain. So that answers this question very clearly that he's waiting for his character to be reproduced in the church. And then it says that if we had done the work and sown the seed of love to these people, you know, he would have come um, and would have gone to heaven. So that's just answer that question from Kubalo. Um, I'm really sorry that I didn't outline, um, you know, given maybe 27 reasons why I'm an Adventist, um, to sort of like help, you know, maybe someone who's trying to join. But my main emphasis was to detach our identity from a fixated system and try and reveal ourselves as a people that love God, right? Um, if you ever get a chance, you know, you can read about um, the 1883 session, if you ever get a chance, you know. And you find how interesting it was. I outlined this experience of James White, where James White talks about how many a times we have been focused too much on the law. And, and he says, if he were to have more time or he were to live and, and gain strength, he would go back and re-preach like, the cross and re-preach Christ, you know. So the role of Adventism, what do we do now? Is pointing people to a savior. When we understand that we need a savior, we then will feel that other people in the world also need a savior. So that's basically what, what my main thing, or my main thing of saying, why am I an Adventist? I'm an Adventist because I'm an imperfect person, right? Um, I, I do a, a believe in the Sabbath. I do believe in keeping the law. I do believe that Jesus is going to come again. And I do believe that in righteousness, you know, and all of that. But I believe that Jesus came to save, die on the cross mm -hmm. for us. And we need him to become so sort of like perfect. Maybe, maybe it's because I don't say that, but that's basically the outline that we are in need of a savior and we need to point others to a savior. So now the specifics, guys, um, it, we will all work in a different way. You know, like the book of Corinthians says, you know, others are the eye, others are the hand, and all of that. Everyone has a different spiritual gift. I'll make an illustration. When um, Ellen White and James White would go out and go preaching, you know, one of the homes that they used to um, stay in was the, I think it's the Hollingtons or the Wellingtons. Uh, right, I might be wrong. It might be an O W or H, you know. Um, and those people took care of them and their children whilst they would go out and preach. Those people have participated in spreading the gospel because they have lended their home and they have assisted ministers in doing that. So that, you know, uh, um, is a gift on its own. It's a participation of, of being, of, of achieving the greater picture type of thing. So I, I cannot get to the specifics to say, guys, we need to do one, two, three, four, five, six, no. You know, the main thing, and, and I said this in the beginning, one of the things that um, I, I, that I found gobsmacking when I was reading um, Thoughts on the Mount of Blessing, it says that when Satan sinned, the thought that there was a law came as something new to the angels. They didn't know, um, thou shalt not have any other gods before me. All they knew was love God and love one another. And everything they did sprang from those principles. So when we have those principles in our mind, when we have love in our mind, we will not go wrong. That's more or less what I was trying to outline, right? I can hand over to... Uh, right. thank, you so thank you so much for that one, much appreciated. Okay, so, so I think the take-homes are pretty much um, straightforward. Um, we, we, we are not um, any peculiar from the world. And, and I think there's a bit of, and I'm going to say this as an Adventist, there's a bit of religious ego that is attached to Adventism. Uh, the, I'm, I'm better than, I think one of the, the means that you put across was what Adventists think of other people. I think it was just a picture of, I think it was a gold statue and that people just worship 
uh, statues and all that. Maybe they don't ascribe to any religion, or if they do, it's not as superior as ours. We're the better ones. We're the ones going to heaven. And somebody say today in the morning that God is not Adventist, by the way. All right? Definitely God is not Adventist, by the way. And that's a very interesting concept. Let me have boys coming through here to learn more uh, about why we're Adventist and the implications of it. And again, I love how you put across some to say that it's not a list of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, because that one already, by saying that, we've already excluded ourselves from the general population. The common denominator in all of us, as I'm learning, as everyone is learning maybe, is that all of us are in need of a savior. And being an Adventist is a privilege and an opportunity to introduce a savior to others. More like the gospel is like a beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. And I think that's a beautiful thing altogether. Boys, sure boy. Show me in my audio. Loud and clear, brother. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I want to first begin to uh, uh, to answer the question of, of how do we show love? You show love by being relevant. We you you can't you can't claim to love someone and then be always irrelevant or ignorant of whatever that they are going through. So as a church or as an organization or as Adventism or as Adventist. We show love by being relevant to the community that we are in. But the problem then now is that it is difficult because we, we are irrelevant and it's going to be difficult to show love. We, are, we exist in a community that is full of hungry people and the basic and the foremost need is to feed those people rather than to tell them that Jesus loves you. So it's, it's the way that you will show such a community is to provide and help the problem of hunger in a place where there is no peace, in a place where, where, where there is a need, you ought to be relevant. And once you are relevant, it's an easiest way of communicating love to a person or to a community, to your community. And, and then uh, it, it pains my heart when you spoke about where you work in town, and saying that you you said you are an Adventist and someone then asked, who are you? What is that? What is Adventism? And, and, and it also brings more, more closer to me that sometimes when you introduce yourself as an Adventist, the first impression that comes to people's mind, minds is, oh, you are Adventist, or oh, those that, does, that do not eat meat, or oh, the Adventist who, are, who, who dress smartly, or oh, you are inviting me, no, I don't have a suit or I don't have smart clothes. The world then out there knows us as Adventists on things that are not salvific or on things that are irrelevant. Are irrelevant because when you want to invite someone into Adventism, then, then start to thinking about their clothes and, and suit and trying to fit into an organization. I would love for us to be an organization that when someone that when you speak of Adventism, they speak with the first impression that comes to someone's mind is an organization that is full of love, is an organization that is relevant, is an organization that loves and cares for, for, for the dying world out there. And perhaps uh, uh, my question would be, as an organization or as a church, why are we so much program oriented in or our programs from January to December, are programs that are so planned in that saves us as members only. You know, you plan from you go, you submit the plans to the church board and stuff. Th those programs you find out they are centered on, on, on us and not the world out there, and not in soul winning. Right now, people are crying for churches to be to be opened, to be opened, but the people, the world. The community is dying out there. We, are, we want to go back to church and, and, and experience the programs and save ourselves. Than, than the, so when the church is closed, this seems like also the, 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 the saving of people, the saving of, of, of the dying world is seized again. So, so I, I love the statement that you say that the, the greatest argument in favor of the gospel is a loving and a lovable Christian. So... And, and maybe to, 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 to sum up the question is to say, why is it then that our organization 
is like that because you can go from January to December, you fail to even have one evangelistic campaign or one thing, or you find out, no, it's only limited to Dockers. Or it's only, so I, 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 why is it that our church is structured that way? Because we can then feel, seem to fit in. And as long as we have interesting programs, fine, we are happy, we go in Sabbath, Sabbath, Sabbath out and everything is just normal. And we are so less burdened to, now when you ask someone of Jehovah's Witnesses, the first thing that comes is to, oh, those people who are evangelistical, who are always on the street. So, so why is our church structured in that way? Maybe it might not be a question to, 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 to the presenter, but to all of us. Uh, thank you, Mta. All right, thank you so much, boys, for that one. Much appreciated. Um, I think maybe, you know, what, why, why are we just program oriented and all? I've got two hands, Lunga Ulunga and Takalani coming through as well. I think maybe on the platform, I'd ask people maybe if you can answer this question for me. What, what, what has been your initial reaction? Um, or what has been people's initial reaction when you told them that you're serving the Adventist? What is it that they say to you? Boys say, it, some people say, oh, this one that dress nicely, or this one that don't eat meat. Or these ones that think, you know, all those labels that have come through, and let's see if they meet up with what actually we are and why we actually should be um, Adventist, if anything. One of the things that we should continually question is, is ourselves and our religious inclination. Does it even make sense that we're still Adventists? And if so, how are we subscribing to all of that Adventism, if anything, for that matter? I want to read one quotation here before I give to the next coming hands that are coming up. So thank you. Keep, keep it in there with your uh, pen and pencil and then and, and your paper as well, writing through. I mean, who actually sends something and says, how do you show love? Answer, Christ's method alone will, group will give true success in reaching people. The Savior mingled with people as one who desired their good he showed sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence. Then he invited them, follow me. I mean, think about that. Then he invited them, follow me. Okay, the following hands, the following order. Luna, Takalani, it's nice to be here. Patience, come through in that order. Luna, go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Mta. Am I audible? Loud and clear. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to appreciate a powerful lesson from our sister. Truly, I uh, I don't know what uh, should I say. I underestimated her when I saw the peak and I saw the topic, but surely she attributed the topic in a powerful way. Anyway, I, I just have a few comments, maybe a question at the end. Uh, firstly, we need to understand that uh, in, 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 in biblical studies, the opposite of the word love is not hate, but it, it's self selfishness. The opposite of the word love is not hate, it's selfishness. And uh, that's uh, the root of the word iniquity, and it's the root of the word where that defines the sin. In other words, I'm saying... Uh, the foundation of every sin is on selfishness. That's what Ellen White also says. And iniquity means bent towards self. We are all born selfish. No one, uh, it's, it's not something that someone needs to, to practice as, as you grow or what. From the time we are born as little babies crying for the milk at night when parents are sleeping, we are actually showing that we are born selfish. So it's something that we don't need to be taught. It's something that runs in our genes. And you don't need to be a pastor or whatever uh, to overcome selfishness. It's something that is inside us. That's why there's no way we can be saved through our own righteousness because it is always tainted with the self uh, here and there. So, so for that reason, uh, that's why we will always strike in understanding the issue of love because uh, the agape love, what we ought to be, is unconditional love, love that is not tainted with self. But it's very, very difficult to reach to that point because uh, we, we respond naturally to who we are. For example, if you go to any church, if you go to any church, uh, there are groups, you, you will love those who love you. you. You will care for those who care for you. That's why we have classes in church. 
Yeah. It's a sign that we are selling now. Then uh, I also wanted to say, uh, God as a church, uh, sometimes when we speak of the church, our problem is that we 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 look at our our organization and how filthy it is, and then we conclude that then Jesus must stay even much longer because there's no way these people can be saved. But personally, I believe that God is a church, and that church is a spiritual church. It may have some members in the SDA church, some members in the Methodist church, some members in the Anglican church, and sooner or later, those people will join and become one company. So uh, we, we shouldn't look at the organization when we speak of the church and in light of our expectations of when Jesus should come, because there is a great revival going on amongst the God's children. Some of them may not be really in the Adventist church yet, but they are characters, they are truly manifesting the character of Christ. Then I wanted to say, um, Tom, maybe I don't know whether should I put this as a question, or maybe let me put it this way. Uh, the primary reason for the Sabbath was not for worship, it was for resting. When God gave the Sabbath in, in creation, it was for resting, not for worship. Uh, and some people, uh, especially in America, there are some guys that I study with, there are people who rest on the Sabbath and go to church on a Sunday. Are those people who Adventists, or in our definition, Adventists are people who go to church on, on a Sabbath? Because uh, um, if, if, if we are right that in creation, the Sabbath was given as a rest, then he, people can worship any day because the Bible says in everything you do, give glory to God. Listen, I, I, I'm not saying people should go and worship any way they like, but I am saying we shouldn't think that uh, a country is an entity judging because of the number of the people we see in the church. People who can keep the Sabbath and the Adventists while they are resting. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Fundis, for that one. That's Pastor Lunga there right there. The true concept of the Sabbath is so that we may rest and all that. Takalan, you're next. Patience plus Ulike, next up as well. So Takalani, here we go. Hopefully you can uh, be able to, to be heard, say something so we can hear you. Go uh, good afternoon, sir. This Mrs. Yes. Takalani. Hi, Mrs. Takalani. Um, I, I, I had so many things that I wanted to talk about, but I think Kumbuzo took some of my, my things and, the, and I think Lunga. Uh, I was asking myself this question over and over again when my sister was presenting. Why am I an, why am I an Adventist? Um, if I, I, I would like to answer this uh, question, maybe referring to Christ method alone. It becomes so much difficult to, to understand myself as an Adventist, because what I see in church or what we see in most churches, I feel like we've got um, close to four groups of people within one church. We've got um, the Adventists with pure love. We've got extremists, and then we've got neutral, and then we have the confused. And I think maybe I might be one of the confused one because of maybe how other brethren um, behave themselves when they are with us. The reason why I'm saying maybe we are the confused one, you know, um, there are a lot of, you know, groups that I follow, a lot of people that I engage with. And it will be a shock to, to, to find out Uri, most of the people out there they think Adventists we are a cult movement. And the reason why some pointed uh, at the cult movement, maybe the way we behave. I remember um, we're having a crusade some few years ago. Uh, I think it was in Mkopane. Then there was this other pastor, I think he was coming from Zambia. He said, um, you know, some of us, the way we respect 
uh, survive. It, it, it confuses even maybe the family members, those who don't believe in Adventists. He was talking about a guy who bathed on Friday. He wears his suit and then be ready for Saturday because Sabbath is a day of rest. You mustn't do anything. You mustn't do any work. And he also mentioned that this guy, he doesn't even eat eggs just because he's not sure if maybe the egg was laid on Sabbath. So when I listened to such stories and I was like, you know what, maybe that's why people call us cult because the way we conduct ourselves, it, it raises so many questions to people maybe who don't understand the Sabbath at all. The other thing that I also want to mention when I said uh, maybe the confused one, referring to myself, you know, the, the, the way uh, uh, we talk about maybe things that, the way we point, point out things that we mustn't do, sometimes it feels like a burden to us. You know, um, I don't know when last I sat down at church listening to health message. Because every time when you are, when there is a program of health message, is either the person who will be presenting it, you know, she will, he or she will be pointing out uh, to meet, it has as if we are the worst sinners in the church. And that's what confuses me. Where is that love that Christ taught us? Where is the love that we have to practice within ourselves? Because at the end of the day, I feel like we are a movement which is at war with itself. So it, it, it really confuses me. The attire, I don't want to talk a lot about it, but I think the, 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 the few things that I also want to add, Kiyore, Adventist, we feel like we own heaven. Heaven is for everyone. And I won't be surprised to see most of Sunday worshipers in heaven. I won't be surprised to see maybe people who didn't even set a foot in the church. So I think maybe somewhere, somehow, we need to find ourselves, are we really following Christ's love or we've got, we, we have identified our own love within our movement that doesn't belong to Christ. Because the other thing, I remember one time, um, I think we were coming from, from church, I can't remember, I was driving back with my son. You know, he mentioned something which bothered me so much and till today is still bothering me. You know, every time when we, 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 we have, um, you know, guest day at church or maybe we have to do uh, community outreach, he said, mommy, this thing I don't feel is right. Or every time when we have community outreach, the only thing that we are very much good at is to cook food and go and worship maybe at, a, you know, a, what do they call these places where there are kids with no parents? They only know us because of the food that we bring that day when there is community outreach. Why can't we maybe do something? Maybe why can't we maybe from the beginning of year when we are planning these programs, you know, uh, 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 save money, buy paint or clothes, let's go. You know, if, if we paint the, pla the place where they are staying or we buy them clothes, every time, you know, when they see their walls, they will also remember us Adventists. Every time when they wear those clothes, they will remember us Adventists. But with food, I feel like, you know, we, we are mocking them because we go there, we give them food. They eat the following day when they wake up, they're hungry again, and we're not there to give them food. So I, I, I'm, I, I think maybe uh, uh, we, we, we need to revisit Christ method, especially when it comes to love. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, Mrs. Takalani, for that one. We need to revisit when it comes to Christ's love. Um, one of the things that you pointed out um, is that we, we, we may be an organization at war with itself, the ones that are conservatives, the liberals. Um, I think you mentioned another group, and then the one that you belong and I also belong to, the confused as well. 
And, and I think that's a very important thing then when answering again the question of why we're Adventists as to which sector then do we belong to and what's our relevance at the end of the day. I think also we, in line with that is I give to patients and, and gift and then who are getting on towards to the end of our lesson anyway. Um, is, is I think we are a very disrespectful church that thinks that you can give people a plate of food and suddenly they can become Christian. The decision to follow Christ cannot be bought even by money itself. And you know, we think like, ah, now that you've eaten, come to church next week. Lihe, patience, you're next. Go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, personally, I just want to say thank you first to the speaker. Um, I really appreciate the fact that she didn't really go into specifics and um, just washala on, on the simplicity of being Christian. And I think maybe sometimes are of being an Adventist when in actual fact, um, it's, <laughs> I can say in a very simple, not some, not a very simple thing, but like the concept of it as Christ presented it was um, a concept that even a child can understand. Um, my comment on this whole thing is, because I hear a lot of people going on about how people see us and how um, many times when you say you're Adventist, then people will maybe say, um, oh, you're from that church. Oh, you're from that church. Um, you know, all these things that people say about us. And I wanted to, there's an example that I was thinking of and um, it seemed to fit kind of, or explain why we shouldn't, I, I think we shouldn't really take so so take it so heavily how people how people out there look at us because um the example is if I, I was just telling my sister that if I were to go back to my hometown, um a lot of people they know me in campaign, they know me by only seeing me and they've never really taken the time to talk to me or to interact with me but if you would ask them do you know that girl from Weiwei they'd probably tell you yeah I know we know that girl look at lawyer Ozjela oh that girl that went to the um model c schools oh that girl you know they'd tell you all these things but when you come up close you might find Uguti that which you see oh that which the people are saying is not that which I am or just because a person sees you from afar looking a certain way does not mean that yindlela ongayo. So I think somehow that's also, it, it might be the same situation. Uh, or look at Adventists from afar and then make conclusions ac um, according to appearance. And then they put us in that blanket of all abantu baglenkonzo bayazi tshela or abantu baglenkonzo bagcoka kahle all these things i'm not saying that we are perfect i'm not saying that um there are certain things in the church um that are a bit iffy and you know that are not so comfortable but at the same time it i feel like it's a bit flawed for us to look at ourselves from the perspective of abantu and then um make these conclusions about the church yeah, that's basically my contribution. Thank, thank you so much, Tisha, for that one. Much appreciated as well, your contribution on that one, saying maybe maybe the perception might not be the reality of the situation. So we are Adventists way beyond what people perceive about us uh, or whatever could be going through. Okay, All right, I'm going to give a couple of hands somewhere. It's getting heated up on the on the chat platform there and then, as well as the hands there. So, um, you know what, I'll give you, let me just give two hands and maybe you can come through if you have anything to say about what's going on or the comments said and even the questions asked by Umfundisi, uh, you can come through after the two hands. Gifton Ash and the Demairo family. Then after that, I'll give to Usamu, then Livingstone and Vez G. My man, please do be ready to come through. Gifton Ash. 
your yeah, afternoon and thanks again for for the lesson uh it was quite good and uh is she she walked through uh we she she, she did justice to, to 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 the presentation um it's always hard to present doctrine you know because people come with perceived ideas it is um i just wanted to add on to the the the, the discussion that that's, that's ongoing um number one is as a people um we, we are selling a brand, this, this, this brand called Adventism that we are not fully representing. I'm talking of me, I'm talking of you, I'm talking of the, the majority of us. We, we're selling a brand that, we, that we're not actually uh, um, true ambassadors of. Um, we, we do have a correct message. We have a, uh, the correct institution, but the problem usually is the people inside it. We're cold, we're, we don't love. I'm, I'm just talking in general. I'm not saying everybody's like that. Those few who are doing all they can, thank you and may God bless. Um, I, I then come into to the time where, 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 where the sifting will happen, where the, 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 the chaff will move and, 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 and the, 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 the good will stand. God has got a lot of people, honest people, probably who are who are Catholics or who are into in, into the, the taverns and, and beer holes. And God is keeping them there because if they come at the moment with the current people that we have, they, they might be as well be taken aback. So 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 God is keeping them there until the right time comes, where probably the sifting, and, and we never know. Maybe part of the sifting is this pandemic. Where they 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 they, they uh, people are starting to get cold. I don't I don't name people or anything, but I've noticed in, in general uh, this is a youthful platform. I've, I've I've noticed a trend where youth are mostly they're starting to drink, they're starting to be worldly, they're starting to to leave our 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 Adventist uh, uh, institutions and, and protocols are uh, joining into the world simply because there was no church, you know. So so probably the sifting is happening uh, slowly but surely. Uh, but but it still is continuing because they, there will come a time where you cannot be a fake anymore. You know, you, you either be the real because faking it will not help you and will not help us. But but but, uh, but coming to the true uh, Adventist, who are the true? An Adventist will study his word and he will meditate on, on the word. He will pray and he will share the gospel. Those are the three pillars. Those are the key, key things that shows that we are true, true Adventists. Not the suits, not, no, no, not, not all these are the funny things of, of meat eating. And then I'm, I'm not trying to, 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 to undo the, the, the health message. It's, it's quite important. It's got, it's got a, it's on, um, it's, 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 it's on quality issues on there. But, but those are the pillars that shows that we are truly Adventists in our small circles when we are praying with people, when we are understanding their needs, when we are coming there and to tell them of the soon coming savior. And lastly, we need to pray. We need to continue praying and continue on the principles that were started by our pioneers. I also wonder at times that if, if our pioneers, the people who started this movement, if they are to come back now, let's say like E.G. White, if, he's to, if she's to come back to life like now, will she be an Adventist or she'll be shocked that's what's going on on this institution. But anyway, uh, let's thank God for those that are faithful, those that are trying all they can to, to live according to what God wants them to be. But let's also continue studying the word and doing what's right. Thank you for your time. And all right. Thank you so much for that one, Gifton. Ash, listen up. Our speaker is supposed to leave at 5 o'clock. got about 20 minutes remaining. So I've just talked to her and asked that she may stay as long as 5. Can I give the following hands? Then we'll speak out to give us her deliverables. Um, the answers probably to the questions that will come through. So some of you will come through after the four hands that are here can pull across. So if the four hands can speak as quickly as possible, not to hurry you guys, but hey, let's try what we can to the best of our ability. All right. One of the things that I said here and as I give to the uh, to my Euro family, I'm asking to unmute you there, is what was said by Uati when, when he says they, they wanted to do Christ's method, which is mingling, and then the, they went into the community forums and they introduced themselves in the community forums, and the community was shocked, like, who are you? And, the, and, and these are people that have been in that community for over 15 years. 
you know? So it's shocking. And Vez Mapji also in their church, they went into the community, went into funerals, attended funeral services, attended maybe weddings, attended parties, or whatever the case could be, just to show that we are there, we are very much supportive. Some of the ways in which we can keep ourselves as Adventists, and some of the reasons why we should be Adventists based on that particular situation where we are, the ones that pull through the gospel in such practical ways. Dimairo, go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon and happy Sabbath. Um, yeah, I've just noted uh, some of the uh, contributions that have been happening, you know, some of the comments and some of the opinions. You know, th there's an opinion that in the Seventh day Adventist Church, uh, women cannot preach, for example. Uh, maybe at your local community church, that did not happen. In the churches that I grew up in, women preached. That was not a problem. So this is not collective to the entire organ, uh, entire church. Maybe in that specific community you're in, men have a problem, but it's not the entire Seventh-day Adventist church. Right? And then one thing, another comment I just wanted to add was, many times we're looking at the negatives, looking at what the church is not doing, what the church should do. The question I'm posing to each and every one of you that are here is, what are you personally doing? Right? If you see there's a problem, what are you doing to, to, to change that? Look at the pioneers that started, started the Seventh-day Adventist church. These people were below the age of 30. Right, and they led the church to where it is today. Right, where, as the youth, what are we doing? Right, what are we doing to influence the church so that we focus on the right things? Right, if we are not focusing on preaching the gospel, it means we're going to waste time fighting each other and with a lot of nonsense happening in the local church, you know, and a lot of accusations, a lot of gossiping because we're focusing on the wrong thing. Right, I think uh, Gift did. Uh, do justice in terms of what we need to do as Adventists, right? We need to keep our priorities right. If you can see in your local church that your local church is not focused on evangelism, for example, as local church members, you have a right, right? You have a right. When those programs are being presented to you to vote for them in the business meeting, you have a right to question them, right? You have a right to question them and ask to say, why is it that most of our project programs are uh, local church programs they are not going out you have a right to question all of that right and you have also have a right to give right to influence the church so that we focus on the right on the right uh, goals right let us uh, influence our churches to focus on the right things right we have identified a lot of wrongs a lot of things that are not okay let's influence the church to focus on the right things so that christ coming may be soon thank you all right, thank you so much to the Timaira family so that Christ's coming can be soon. Hassan, the coming of our Lord Livingstone, I think you had your hand up and it went down. Now it looks like you're the last person there, but let me just come through with you, then Vesma G, and it's nice to be here. Go ahead, guys, uh, or uh, ladies, please. Uh, let me start with Livingstone. Go ahead. Uh, um uh give what i wanted to say and also i'm facing an unstable network and so i'm going in and out but anyway let me just uh answer the question why am i an adventist and why are we having this, this discussion i think one of the major problems that we're having as adventist is uh is identity we if if we were to go back and and live according to the song give me that old time religion give me that old time religion you know so if you're going to have we're going to live according to that identity. I don't think we're going to, we're going to have uh, any problems with anyone. We will never please everybody. It is our uniqueness, that uniqueness that makes us Adventist. Is our health message wrong? No, it's not wrong. Is spending a day at church wrong? It's not wrong, right? That, because that is what makes us Adventist. The only thing that has changed right now is the way uh, the approach, like I think there is a uh, mom was telling us about the egg and the chicken uh, being uh, laid down on the Sabbath. That's the approach. They are, that's the approach now. But otherwise, in terms of principle, it is it is correct. So should we ditch that principle because uh, people are there saying uh, you, you're not supposed to be vegetarians? Should we ditch it when, when the medical practice encouraging everyone to be vegetarian we should not ditch that but it's the way we approach those issues the way we deliver those issues 
And the other thing, what attracted you to be an Adventist? Yes, I mean, I was born in an Adventist. My great, 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 and great grandfather were the pioneers of, of Adventist side. So either way, I was going to be an Adventist. I think that should, I should be asking myself, what has kept me? It's the, it's the adventurers, the pathfinders, the senior youth. Those are the activities that I would, I would do in, in all those um, in the, in all those clubs that have kept me in. So should we start blaming? Should, should, should someone uh, an outsider come in and say, why is it you have a perfect? Why is it you keep your children as soldiers? Why is it you, you, you always try to make them march? Why do they have to turn left, right, salute? Who are they selling to, to, uh, saluting to? Are you creating a private army? You know, so those are some of the things that should, should, should not concern us, but it's the way we respond to those things. And uh, just, just today, I know this is a contentious issue to all of us. Uh, to say, um, uh, should we dance in church? I know people dance. I know we all dance. But uh, the thing is, should we dance? That, that, that's a question. We will all take a lead. Uh, and then also, let's remember, the reason why Christianity has some of these issues in, 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 in it is because of Constantine. Constantine, when he converted to Christianity, is the one who introduced most of these secular things, right? So now, are we, are, are, are we not becoming the, 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 the current Constantines? The present constituents why introducing certain things that should not be there I, I will not give examples i'll give you an example just two examples uh first of all we all know the the late president robert Mugabe, right uh the, the former president of zimbabwe there's a group an adventist group that went to the state house and sang to him after they had finished singing do you know what he said you guys are not adventist do we need someone in our, do we need an outsider to start telling us that we are not an adventist we don't need that do we need the president, the former president, to tell us that you guys are not Adventists? He was a Catholic, and he's telling us that you and your, your, your singing is not Adventist. And then there's another example again in Sweden. There's a particular church whereby uh, nine o'clock, nine o'clock, you would know, uh, okay, before nine o'clock, the road will be full. After nine o'clock, there, there will be silence, and there's, there will be music coming up from this church. Why? That church was Adventist. Nine o'clock, it was time for Sabbath school. So as soon as nine o'clock goes to, we know that the, the, the music that is coming out of it is Adventism. We don't need to be witnessing because of the way we, we should be living. If you are living the correct Adventist life, uh, not being lukewarm Adventist today, we are talking about this uh, as if we, we, we are the world and tomorrow we want to go around and start preaching, then we, we, we are wrong. But if we, if, if we are going to be living uh, Adventist, uh, true Adventists, the same way we do on the Sabbath, the same, uh, should be the same way we live on the Sunday up to Friday. So that's the, the present solution is let's live a proper Adventist life in and out of season, represent Christ every day in another way. That's my contribution. All right. Thank you so much for that one. Let me give over. Thank you so much. So live an Adventist life, be an Adventist for all the right reasons. I think our speakers are getting ready to give us the deliverables. There's my G, and it's nice to be here quickly, guys. We'll pull through. Let's go. There's my G. Let me try and be brief. Um, it's going to be hard. In Jesus' day, the Jewish nation that was waiting for the Messiah had sects within them. There were the Pharisees, the scribes, the Essenes. These are the major sects. And none of them agreed anything doctrinally. And yet the Messiah still came when the Jewish nation wasn't ready. If Christ were to wait for us to get ready, he might never come back. But there's a book by um, Maurice Venden. It's entitled Ready or Not, Here I Come. Um, there will come a time when the father will say, just go and get your children. Stop waiting. Just go and get your children. So whether you're ready or not, your being, my being unready is not going to stop Christ from coming back, even if I'm in the church. That's the first thing I, I, I wanted to say. Second thing is, is also... If you think about it, the reason why you are in the church and you go to the church that you go to is because there are people like you in that church. I go to a church where people enjoy singing, where people are real, where people, we talk to each other during the week. It's not just a Saturday thing. And, and people talk across, across each other. There's no one particular group, but that's the kind of person I am. So the, the church, so, so even when I invite people over to our church and the, and, the, and, the, and the comment is, hey, it's such a closer church, it doesn't affect me because this is the church that I'm comfortable with, that I'm proud of. So it's not the labels that everybody else gives us that I worry about. 
what I worry about is, is this the church that reflects my belief? As an Adventist, the reason why we are in church is the reason why other people will come and be in church with us. If you enjoy being isolated and the group of people don't like interacting with each, each other, their church is like that. It's, 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 you have made the church to be that. If you want the church to change, it's up to you. Uh, last note, we started a Bible study group in my, in my youth previous life. A Bible study group that the church, that was not in any of the church programs, but we'd meet every Friday evening, we would have Bible study. Group started off with about six, seven people, ended up with 60 people at one stage. And, and we ended up having Pentecostals, we had Catholics, we had Methodists, we had a whole lot of people that were not Adventists joining us because this Bible reading thing was actually making a difference. Maybe if we started being real as ourselves and stop waiting for, I don't know, a Messiah to come and sort out the church, maybe things would start happening in our church. And if we stop worrying about what other people think about what we are, maybe, just maybe, would get on with the business of being Christians, of being Adventists, and people would actually come to God. Thanks. All right. Thank you so much, Vesma G, and people will actually come to God. It's nice to be here. Thank you so much, uh, this, uh, our pastor there. Thank you so much, um, there. And let's say it's nice to be here, and then I'll give to Usam to come through. Sam, what do you come through after Sam is, uh, is completed? It's nice to be here. Sam is coming through to give us the deliver verse. Nandi Ubalapa. Right. Uh, thank you so much. Um, thank you for the lesson, Sam. It was a very great one. And uh, the approach to it was excellent. And there are two things that I want to make mention of. The first thing is, uh, why am I an Adventist? Says the topic. It doesn't say, why are we Adventist? I mean, Adventist because of different reasons. The, uh, the church that was close to me used to come and pick me as they were going to play soccer. So I eventually gained friends there. Then eventually one thing led to another. Then I became an Adventist. And it's different with any one of us or every one of us. So why am I an Adventist? It's because of what I've learned, what I've grown to know that has kept me as an Adventist or that keeps me as an Adventist. And it's not who does what or who doesn't do what. That leads to my second point that says, in the Adventist church, there is the church and the church is where we deal with God and how he wants us to do things, and it stops there. And the organization is where we vote for you, whether you are wrong or you are right. Okay, I think we're having a bit of some in lesson. the church, yeah. or from concept, am I audible? Yeah, but we're having a bit of some problems uh, in terms of the network. Um, Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so if, if we concentrate on the church more than on the church organization, you realize that will eliminate 80% of our so-called challenges that we come across in the, in the, in the Adventists. And will be gladly to, 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 to will be glad or will gladly enjoy being Adventist. Thank you. Mm. All right, thank you so much for that one, Samuel. I'm going to give it over to you. Thank you. It's nice to be here, Gumanandi Ugubalana. Then I'm going to give over to Usamu, our speaker. I'm going to ask to unmute you. Um, in the beginning of the lesson, um, part of being Adventist was the fact that people saw a bottle of wine at the back right there. And then people were like, is that wine heavenly or it's not? Right? And I think it was just grape juice, maybe the type that Jesus gave to us at Kana and all those kind of things. Take us through some of my thoughts. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm going to clarify, I'm going to clarify, clarify, 
Uh, no, so joy, so joy, oh, I think you, I would have started acting a little. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, uh, it's, it, it is grape juice. Um, yeah, okay, anyways. Um, I will try by all means to outline um, some of those questions posed. But I think the other questions were just on like a personal note to people to know for themselves. Um, but the ones that I'm going to outline um uh firstly that there were i saw a question there that says um, what is adventist music right guys yeah i'm not going to really go into the depths of that right because that's just i think it could be a topic for another day um reason being we'll all define it on different um, <laughs> we'll all define it i see pro uh professor um uh, with his wine there okay Join us, okay, it's fine. But anyways, uh, <laughs> I won't really outline it. I think it's a topic for another day where we can go into that. <clears throat> and I'm not really going to give my personal view on, on that. Um, I saw, who is, I think it's Veza Macchi. If I'm pronouncing it wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, where he spoke about the fact that Jesus will not um, <clears throat> wait for us, guys. And you also spoke about how the Pharisees, they missed Jesus, even though they were studying and all of that. I want you to understand something, right? Um, another question, and I'm not, not personal, like we need to read the Bible very clearly. When the first advent of Jesus was outlined, and I, and I mean outlined to a point where God gives a prophecy in Daniel chapter nine, where he outlined, and there's a timeline. So they were given a timeline. This is what will happen. And remember, um, it, it speaks about uh, a couple of other things, the temple um, getting rebuilt. That was a prerequisite. And it, we are shown when. This is when the temple gets rebuilt. This is how many days. This is what will happen. This is what will happen at this specific time. There is a clear timeline, the 2,300 days timeline, and within it, the 490 days, where it outlines um, the ministry of Jesus, the baptism, um, you know, him dying on the cross, uh, in the midst of the week, and even the stoning of, of, of Stephen in AD 34. So when we study God's word, I, can we be very open-minded? And also, yeah, yeah, we must read clearly. Because if, if, if God clearly outlined it, you cannot necessarily then compare the first advent to the second advent, because now it's different. You know, the Bible is very clear that, and this gospel, of the kingdom shall be preached unto all nations. And then it doesn't say that um, the end will come. And even the signs of the last days, they are the signs, but they do not, it does not mean that it, it's going just going to come. Do you know what I mean? Every time we get so excited, oh, an earthquake happened, oh, what, what? No, it says, and the gospel will be preached and then the end will come, right? And where is it? Um, even when you look at even the prophecy of um, the angels holding the four winds, when you read even early writings, it says that the angels, when they are about to loosen the winds, Jesus lifts up his hand and he says, my blood, my blood for these people. And the angels hold it. God is, loves us. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a message of grace and that he's willing to do and show that he, he loves us. In the book Steps to Christ, it says that when we are lost, we would have known that it was because of us. Even in great controversies, we will go and say, you know what, you are just, you are loving because you have done everything in your power to ensure that we get saved. Like I said, the first advent is different because it's outlined specifically. This is what's going to happen at this point, at that point, right? Which will be different. So I do not think that we can then apply the first advent to, to Jesus' second advent. The Bible and the spirit of prophecy are very clear, right, on that. And then, um, okay, also just to also now just to, to sum up everything from all that has been said, um, thank you very much for uh, all the comments and even some of the, I don't know, yeah, the comments that people said, like in terms of we cannot generalize. And I did say this in the beginning that someone will generalize from um, an experience that they have had, right? And it's not good to basically say everyone is like that. And that is very true. And maybe we might not beat ourselves up on other people's mistakes, 
but it's on us. But my essence was not, and I was not trying to try and beat people up. But what I was trying to show is in us asking ourselves what an Adventist is, my, for me, you know, the most important thing was the message of the cross and love. That was the main thing, right? Um, and I appreciate all the comments and thank you even to 230 Conversations um, for helping us or giving us a platform, you know? Um, now we are on talk shows. <laughs> yeah, you know, I said the afternoon lesson, uh, so, uh, so a talk show, um, yes, I like it. but anyways, thank you very much for hosting us and allowing us to share our thoughts and, um, and our opinions, all right? Like I said, I don't claim to know everything. Um, it's just what I've been convicted on from studying the word of God, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I appreciate everyone's comments and thoughts. Um, may God bless you all. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Samu, for that one. Um, you know what? Um, I think you're, you're with one of our speakers. I think the speaker for next week, are you with her? Yes, I am. Oh, yeah. There she is. May she appear on the camera. There she is. Um, so next week, here we go. There she is. She's the one coming up. Taking us through our lesson. Let me just post your uh, post here so that everyone knows what's going to happen. Just so we may know what's happening next week. We've got our speaker. Let me just open this up quickly. Uh, why am I not? Here? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me take this out and then put that back. All right, so Ubuntu Mandela is coming through next week and she's going to be talking about uh, the issues to do with um, the world. Uh, the world. Yeah, the world against the word. I think that's, I think I got that right. Né? The word against the world. I'm trying to look for where the thing of it, I can't just find it now. Oh, there he found it. Yeah, there she is. Okay, so this is our speaker and guests. It's, it's good to see friends um, being together and working together for God. She's coming through next week and the word against the world. What a topic. Let's come through next week, everyone. And thank you for those that came in today and came in on time. And, and we really much appreciate. Now, at this moment, we're going to close off the session with the word of prayer. But then Ustak Bodhi has something to say and someone needs to go. So let me allow someone to pray for us. And then we can hear a comment of Sakoti. Then there's also what is called the after, after tears, uh, whereby we are here and we talk about what was going on after scenes. After tears sounds wrong. After scenes where we talk about what was going on here and all those kind of beautiful things. So let me allow Usamu to, to pray for us um, quickly. And then from there on, Nigas Usakoti. And then I uh, will stop the live stream on Facebook, but I'll give a couple of announcements before that. Samu, I've been asked you reach you. Take us to our savior. All right. Let's close our eye for a word of prayer. Our kind and gracious Father, we'd like to thank you for the privilege you've given to us to discuss, to share ideas. May you help us, dear Father, to draw closer and closer unto you. Help us, dear Father, to reveal your beautiful love to others. Help us to have love for one another. Be with our families, dear Lord in heaven. You know our struggles. You know what we're going through. I pray asking that you stretch forth your hand and you carry us through, dear Lord in heaven. Help us, dear Father, and be with us now and forevermore. We love you. Now for a moment, just my name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen and amen for that one. All right. So I'm going to give to Sir Cody. I think you're still there. Um, Sir Cody, there you are. I'm trying to unmute you right there. I think our speaker is free to go. And she says that, listen, if we have any further questions, we should be able to contact her. I think I have her numbers. And also the presentation, those that want the presentation that she made, please do make sure that you can contact me. Um, I think I'll put my numbers as well on the platform as well as on Facebook uh, on that. So I'll go ahead in the meantime, go ahead. Uh, so, 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 for it. So, I see, see we begin in that, but she just uh, simply presented in, in, in that, but there. Right, but now I, I saw a heat, man, you see, Puma. I think uh, this thing has to be said, man, boldly, and I want to say, Uchi, there is a, there's an SDA system in the Church of God. These, these must be clearly outlined because even Utate, I think, uh, 
uh, its testimony is volume four, if, no, if I'm not mistaken. What and one day, the conference will cease to be the mouth of God, meaning the organization uh, will no longer subscribe to what the Church of God uh, subscribes to. So all these uh, problems that we are facing and what, what it's because the system has a way of trying to protect itself. But now the gospel Baba, frees people. The gospel frees us. The way Adventism was introduced to, to the world out there, it's not even different from a cult. But Tina, who are inside, uh, maybe we've understood it better. We, 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 we think it's not a cult and, and, and for sure, maybe it's not. So I wanted to say, maybe people, we are afraid. I mean, I, I, I'm not afraid anymore. The church of God existed even before the system was formed in 1860. So whatever problems that are there in the church are part of the organization's uh, rules and policies. I think uh, those who have been who have been exposed to the system's policies and, and laws. Those are meant to guard, safeguard the system. But our church, the church of God, is different from what the system is, 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 is offering us. Someone asked, Uchi, can we dance at church? Considering what the system is, is presented, we can't dance. The dressing, the what, what, uh, we, we've been opened our eyes as to how our culture has been stolen because we, 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 the introduction of that system uh, made us think what these things are worldly things. Now we are not even enjoying it anymore. But thank God, because the truth is coming out. The Lord has revealed Uchi, when we are in Christ, Buffett, there is no bondage. There is nothing that has to give us a headache as to how we should behave in, in, in the Lord. Mena, if the song is nice, I will dance because some chapter four, some chapter 104 say, tells, tells Uchi, I mean 150 verse four, tells me what he praise the Lord with dance. How I dance, maybe that will, uh, that will determine uh, the, how I dance uh, will, will vary there. But dancing, how can we ask dancing, comparing the verse to the system? So guys, please, let it be clear. Uh, let it be clear, Uchi. these things are different. The Seventh-day Adventist organization and the Seventh-day Adventist church uh, are two different things. One is worldly owned and the other is God's church. There is no bondage in our church. I repeat that. Thank you very much for it. Oh, thank you so much for that. Okay, um, I think I think uh, let me just start uh, because we're now getting to the end. We've got it to the end of our listener speakers out already. Um, to the Facebook family, I have sent you a link to the Zoom. We're now uh, officially going to get into the after tears, after scenes, um, where we'll be able to talk now. Um, if those that want to remain, you can still remain. If you feel like you'd like to go, that's still pretty much okay. So to the Facebook family, I've sent you a Zoom link. Please do click on that one. You can come into the um, into the um, uh, uh, the Zoom here right now. The numbers are not as many as it was in the beginning. Thank you so much, everyone. Let's see each other, those that are leaving, next week as we start off at half past nine with the lesson by, uh, by me and Leander uh, uh, as we talk about Joseph and how he's able to forgive his brothers, which is a very interesting and very serious thing, especially today when we talked about it in the morning. Uh, a lot of serious uh, heartfelt 
stories were being uh, spread and being expressed. God needs to help us and pull us through on that one. I'm going to stop the live stream on Facebook now. Thank you, Facebook family. You'll find this copy of today's presentation on our YouTube channel. And our YouTube channel is uh, 230 Conversations SDA. Again, 230 Conversations SDA. God bless you all. Let's have a great evening. Now it's the after scene.